every month. Is happens. it just Xbox or is it everybody? No, no it's, it's just everybody. It, it's everybody. I do it. I do it. Like he said, about once a month. Either either I mess up the intro or I mute us. And well, I muted us. Well, no, one of two things oh, happen. Wow. Either he shows up with his fly down, or he forgets the sound. See, and why do you think I say no to webcams? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what is going on? Yo, welcome to the pregame. We were we were getting in a little bit about uh, about Aaron Greenberg's uh, little salt shaker message, but before that, I do want to say because you know there's been so many new viewers to the show and everything. I want to let you guys know what the pregame is. Basically, you know we we come together before the show officially starts with its intro and all that good stuff, getting into the topics, and you know we we just talk to each other the way friends normally do, whether it's about. Uh, Death Note, which I actually watched today, or, or anything going on. I mean, it's something that uh, we all do. I hope you guys like it as a feature of the show. But um, we were talking about the Aaron Greenberg uh, kind of like salt shaker picture. And, and Don, what, what were you? I'm looking for it. I can't find it. Where is this shit? Uh, just go to, his, go to his Twitter and then go to um, the, his media feed and it'll bring it up. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of like, like. Here's the thing, like you don't need to throw shade back. You just need to to tell what you have. You know what I mean? Like you have the most powerful system. You have the best versions of the multi plats. You don't. You don't need to dip your toe in that area. You know what I mean? And Mega says. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute bullshit. I mean, just throwing a, shot, a salt shaker. Because people are are crying over pre-order sales is is not overstepping the bounds. I mean, really, in all actuality, for we've seen a hell of a lot worse coming from, you know, from Nintendo, from 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 Sony, uh, from even PC. Uh, Nintendo, you know. what the hell has yeah. Nintendo done? <laughs> well, Nintendo, Nintendo took a shot a long time ago. They were saying something. Uh, I remember it was on Twitter. It was a while back, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as vowel as what Sony likes to likes to throw it at Xbox. But it was it was a shot. It was somewhere around last year towards the holidays. I can't remember actually what it was, but hopefully the people in the chat can remind us. But, uh, you know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if, you know, companies taking shots. This is not taking a shot. This is just basically saying, look, why are y'all being salty? Why, <laughs> why are y'all raising y'all's blood pressure because of pre-order sales? Dude, so, social media has been absolutely crazy today. What a Darius. The more, the more and more, like, Tomb Raider screenshots come out and stuff like that, the, the crazier and crazier Twitter has been getting. And as far as Nintendo taking shots, I'm sorry. Any company who puts a guy out in front of a camera with a cow hat and, and, and is milking a cow in a game with the Joy-Con controller, they, they can't take shots. Like, that's immediately <laughs> revoked right there, man. Yeah, it's, it's like Urkel picking a fight with you, man. You're just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to walk away from this one because this isn't cool. <laughs> you know, you can't take it seriously. It's like Urkel picking a fight with Debo. Like, that's just not going to happen. You know? <laughs> Urkel's giving that chain, man. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. But I would like to say a <clears throat> huge shout out. Predator is on the panel today, man. I I, I gotta say, man, I, I was worried about you, you know, living over in that part of the United States with that whole like huge hurricane. That you know, it, it was funny because when you DM me a couple days ago, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm I, I might have to deal with a tropical storm. And then like yesterday, I'm here in Category Four, all types of catastrophe and <laughs> shit like that. I was like, oh my goodness, man. But I'm I'm glad that that you're safe, dude. Yeah, but I, I knew I was gonna be a little late today anyway because I was working today. But um, you know, people don't really estimate the size of Texas. They see it on a map and they don't realize how far Houston and that and uh, I guess yeah. the coast is from from Dallas. Like we're really, really not even close to each other. Mm-hmm. Like it hasn't. It's barely rained here where I'm at. This <clears> is you know because of my job, I do have to provide support for some of the stuff that goes on to the coast. So um, that's why I was busy this whole week, basically uh, getting uh, stuff prepped for that. So. The, I made it. I'm here. <laughs> the real truth, you wore ruby red slippers, and he said there was no place like home. And thanks <laughs> for we, we all know what really happened. Speaking, yo, speaking wow. of ruby red, I had I had a, a request in a DM from our our BGST brother, Mister Crap Gamer. Uh, you guys, you see like the pregame kind of animations going on right now. Yeah. I had I had to change the background because he said, man, he couldn't watch the the background from last week. He felt like he was on acid, tripping balls. I, I think it was 
too much PlayStation VR though. I don't know, but um. <laughs> Maybe so, I was watching the podcast in PlayStation VR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> But um, oh, Pred, I hope I hope you like it, man. I got I got the PUBG guy in, in you know, the the scrolling kind of like animation. Uh, I know you're a huge PUBG dude. Um, we got Overwatch, uh, Sonic, um, Gang Beast for O Snaps. Um, I don't know. I, I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. Constantly changing this up though, huh? Every Ev- every week. Evolution, man. <laughs> you just gotta keep getting better. You know. I like it. Don't expect to be the same twice. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to tell you right now. I know you're new. It's it's not going to be the same twice. You know, you know. they accused me of having ADHD growing up. Uh, I, I never got any type of medicine for it or anything like that. But it, I guess it might be true. They should have given you medicine. <laughs> what I, I tell you last week, you have more layouts than Xbox has. Uh, um, um, shit, I forgot. Yeah, more, you're making more. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> well guys i i am really excited uh of course we're having our our huge gamescom wrap up and not only that like i said twitter has been going crazy with these tomb raider screenshots i want i want to get your guys opinions on the two new pieces of hardware that xbox showed off you know it feels like it happened so long ago because you know we, we were doing our show saturday and then sunday you know gamescom kicked off and everything like that but um I, I really want to hear you guys' uh, opinions on everything. And shout out to the 67 people checking out the pregame right now. Nice. Uh, and Got a little some chime in the back and shit? What's going yeah, on? that was my iPhone. For some reason, O Snaps doesn't realize I am on a live show <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also, uh, UK was telling me I have to I have to uh, pronounce his name better. Well, you shouldn't have no weird ass name, Darius, Darius. However you say that, Dazarus, Dazarus. Whatever. Dude, I'm calling you Dog. I'm Just call him you, Daz, man. I'm calling him da- Darius from here on out. Just because he didn't like. He's about as bad as Quinta. Yeah, I'm coming up with these crazy names, man. Last night there was a name of a Japanese game that's going to be coming out on PlayStation. Um, I wrote it down. Here, let me. I'm gonna. Wait, where's uh, that? Let me get one. Now, now he's got to find it because he can't remember the name. <clears throat> no, no, no. Trust me. Trust me. He wrote in his sketch pad. All right. Green. All right, green. here we go. All right. <laughs> this, this is one of the PlayStation 4 games that's going to be coming out at the end of the year. <laughs> and it's called. I'm just going to spill it out and see if you guys can pronounce it. Okay. U T A W A R E R U M O N O. Utah Wives. You told Mario Mario. <laughs> Did you, you just fall saying? off a cliff, Mika? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. What the hell is that? What? Just on that name alone, that game shouldn't sell worth shit. Because it's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, that man. that's ridiculous. Mega, Come on, Mega Man. You got you got a Mega Man. Damn it! <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm done talking. Yo, you guys take over the show for the rest of the time. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> done. <laughs> Oh, D-U-N done. All right. All right, guys. Well, I got a couple extra clicks that I have to do going on here when we do get into the intros and stuff like that. So I want to see how smoothly I can transition to the actual show. So are you guys ready to check out the intro? Well, let's do it. <laughs> uh, Foos, where are you, man? We need that golden voice for let's do it. It's just not, you know. <laughs> I'm yeah, hearing it from Onimus, I'm it, I'm ready to restart this whole <laughs> pregame up again. You know, you know we uh, love you, that, Onimus. Yeah, let let's go, guys. Yeah.
We got to... What's going on, people? And welcome to another episode of the next podcast, guys. I am actually, oh my goodness, I muted me and the panel, and the panel just went ham on, on some crazy shit. Like, I can't even think straight right now. Oh my goodness. Yo, you guys are insane. Oh, uh, we, got, we got a great show for you tonight, guys. Of course, it is our Gamescom wrap-up. And uh, I thank God, yo, Predator's here, safe from Texas. We have uh, everybody except a couple, which we're going to go into when we get into the intro. So it's about time to do those now. And I am going to start off with the man coming live from the 405. And you know he loves those Manny Petties. I am talking K-Mega. Only the Petty. You know what I'm saying? I, hope that, I love when those love when those those Asian women rub on my feet and my legs and take care of my cuticles. It is awesome. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm sorry, you know, for men out there to find to find you got a problem with your sexuality or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Your wife, your girlfriend, whatever will appreciate you not having dirty, nasty, rusty ass feet rubbing against your your women's legs you know what i'm saying so i'm just letting you know <coughs> anyway man it's gonna be one hell of a show i'm we, excited we just went into a dark part of the next podcast with that that whole statement man you know Mega, you start, I really, man. I really you start. i'm just trying to explain to man yeah, look man <laughs> if you were if you're a working man you out there you wear working boots it is about having them feet right man because i'm telling you if you don't it's 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 horrible it's horrible man i've seen i've seen it seen the corns and nasty you toenails. You about to grab Aaron Greenberg's salt shaker, put it in some water and Toe soak fungus, man, it's horrible, man. I got to keep myself fresh oh, at wow. all times. But anyway, man, we're going to have to do this, man. One hell of a show. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, next on the list, um, your lights might be flickering because it's about that time to stand up, show that respect, kiss that ring, the Don. Hey, what's up, guys? Yes, I don't get pedicures. My skin is like rawhide. I don't need that shit. So, let's do it. Wow. Mercy. Nice, nice. I like uh, short and sweet as well, man. So, uh, yo, let, let's move on to Jeff Goldblum's love child. Of course, I am introducing <laughs> Dark Otomus. Hey, what's up, everyone? Always happy to be on the next podcast. Um, it's going to be a good show tonight. Nice. Uh, <laughs> these guys sound so energetic right now, don't they? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great show. Let's, let's He's like wearing on. a silk shirt and he has like the little chest hair all curled up. He's got like a starter mullet going on, like Jeff Goldblum. Little taco be hanging out. Oh, <laughs> I, hate, I hate all of you right now. <laughs> just, just wear it as a badge of honor. It's all good. <laughs> Well, you also got to remember, he's the one that said white people do not get ashy. That, yeah, that white yeah. people don't get ashy. At least we don't see it. Damn, you know? what are you like? Oh. Maybe Swedish people. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, but hey, I know man, Italians, I man. I don't know about you, know, about you guys. Put lotion on, you will get ashy, bro. I, yeah, I put, I put lotion on right now, but I don't get ashy. I'm Yo, telling you right now, I don't get see, ashy. No, white people get ashy. They just don't call it ashy. They just call it dry skin. That's what they yeah. call it. Though. That's what yes. it is, man. But yes. it's the it's same, same thing. Yeah, but, it, but it's not. Eggs, man. But I'm not ash. Oh, man. Welcome to Xbox Beauty Channel, everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Yo, next on the list is the assassin of the gaming media. You guys, um, he's been around YouTube for a while. And, of course, you know him for the, calling out those kiosks out there when it comes to Xbox One. Of course, Predator! What's up, man? I'm still trying not to laugh about everybody's foot fetish on here. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I wasn't even getting involved, man. Like, I could have said a couple things. I'm, I'm good. Like, <laughs> oh, man. I'm good, man. Let's get into it, man. K-Mega's upset that white people don't get ashy. I don't know. Wow. Yo, guys. Uh, what? 
Of course. <laughs> I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> we got a we got a couple next podcast family members that we got to oh, shout out. Of course, that that cookie peddler herself, uh, the queen of Xbox, as I've seen a few people call her on Twitter. Uh, I call her the first lady of the next podcast. Oh snaps is out there selling my favorite peanut butter cookies. Hopefully, she comes home with a few. Um, and of course. The Golden Voice, Fuskies as well. And guys, I will have to say, there has been a Fuski sighting. I saw the name go online a couple of days ago. I tried to get a hold of him. Um, seems like he's doing better, and hopefully uh, I will talk to him soon and see when the hell he's going to get back on the show. But guys, we got to go in on Gamescom, we, uh, the big wrap-up here. And um, of course, first things first, we got to talk about hardware uh, I'm going to go into the one that's probably a little bit lighter, uh, the one that I see more people excited about, and that is the Xbox One X Project Scorpio Day One Edition. And, uh, Pred, I got to ask you, man, uh, you know, it's got gradient graphics on, on, the, on the top and on the front, which, of course, the Don got confused about. Well, it still um, has a texture underneath. Size that texture, that texture, and so, that texture. Underneath. So you you were you were wrong, but not wrong. Is that what you're trying to yeah. say? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. All right, yes. I got you. Yo, Pred, what what did you think about that with the Project Scorpio okay. kind of like label on it, uh, on the controller, everything, man? Uh, are are you excited for this day one edition that they showed at Gamescom? I actually am. I wasn't at first, but then I, I guess it grew on me. I guess the more people were talking about it, it kind of grew on me, but. I was like, I just want to play in console. What if I don't want the Project Scorpio edition? What if I just want the regular edition? I realized I had to wait for that. And there was a chance of me not getting it. So um, when I went online to order it, you know, I'm sitting here in F5 like everybody else. I was getting mine from the Microsoft store. So, you know, it was it was weird how they came out because, like, Amazon and Target and everybody else had theirs out first. The Microsoft store it seemed like they waited for them to sell out before they actually put theirs online. I actually thought I wasn't going to get one at all. Um, I had almost given up and then. Um, I saw a tweet come out and say, hey, they're online now on the Microsoft Store. And I was like, oh, shit. So I jumped on. But I mean, I, I like it. I think um, I would have liked a little bit more customization on the controller itself. But um, it was a nice surprise to have it etched in there. I, th- I don't think anybody was expecting that um, until it leaked out a little bit earlier. Nice, nice. So uh, so you actually have one on pre-order. You're excited. I, I, I know, like, with the news that's been going on, uh, you know, the past couple days with, with showing comparisons and stuff like that, man, you, you got to be hyped to be getting this machine, right? Oh, yeah, um, definitely. And it's actually, you know, I'm looking at the, the specs and stuff like that. I, it's on par, if not better than what I'm using on my PC right now. And I've spent a lot of money on my PC. So, so, so um, we're going 1440, 70 frames per second. Is that what you're saying, man? I'm, I'm usually pushing about 1440p, 70 frames per second. But like just looking at the visuals I'm seeing right now. Um, they look like they're on par with what I've been getting off my PC right now. Awesome. Awesome. Yo, Dark Man, do you have one of these Project Scorpio Day One Editions? Uh, do you have it pre ordered? Are are you hyped about this thing? What do you like? What do you don't like, man? Um, I have it pre ordered. Yeah, man. Um I'm, I'm excited. I I've said it before that I was excited for the uh Project Scorpio uh edition of the Xbox One X. Uh just because I think that I like that little writing on the Project Scorpio and then on the controller is all blacked out. I, I love that. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm absolutely ecstatic for this console. I think it's going to be um, definitely worth the money. And uh, I think I'll be very pleased and happy with it. Dark, sure. I got I to gotta ask you a question, man. Um, you know, uh, on Twitter, there's this thing. You're either team sticker or you're team no sticker. Now, with the Project Scorpio edition, the sticker actually goes over the Project Scorpio that's written on the console. So, man, are you team sticker or are you team no sticker? And what do you think team sticker is going to do, man? I, I haven't seen this at all. I, don't, I have no idea what you're you're referring to but uh i would have to say no sticker <laughs> no, no say you're gonna, you're gonna pull it off and, and let that that emblem shine yeah man i'm not yeah oh okay i i see what you're saying yeah no i'm not i'm not gonna keep the sticker on i'm gonna take it off i want to see that emblem you know nice man i i've been team no sticker ever since i i, I got my first console so like it, it, it's all good man but it is a thing on twitter so i i want to i want to ask people um so, yo, let's go back to Pred real quick. Yo, team sticker or no sticker, man? What, what are you going to do with Project Scorpio? 
man, no sticker, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off the front and I'm going to stick it on the bottom so you can't see it. <laughs> You're going to have the system stepping on the sticker like the whole That's time. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's All right. right. <laughs> yo, uh, yo, Mega, man, like, mm. <laughs> yeah. That's number one. That's number one for, for the one. actual show. Mega, man. Yo, Mega, <clears throat> what, what do you think about the Project Scorpio? Uh, you know, the aesthetics, what, what it looks like. Did you pre order and then. I got. I got to ask you about the sticker as well, man. Well, yeah, uh, I pre-ordered. It, I wasn't expecting the whole Project Scorpio, you know, little uh, uh, written thing on the on the box, you know. And and I'm now, and I'm one of those people that you know just want the console for the power. But it is a really cool touch, uh, and especially if when you're one of the early adopters of of, uh, of a console, that kind of rewards you for it. So yeah, I'm 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 stoked for it. The look and design, uh, I, me and you bought, were absolutely right. I, the Don was completely wrong as usual. You know, on it's, most things. It's, it seems to be a trend uh, <laughs> now on this show. Yeah, we, we, go we back. can live the done. experience. We can play the clips again. <laughs> no, anyway, so, so anyway, no, but it, it's it's no, it's, it's got a good touch to it. I'm, I'm excited, and you know, I'm, I had to I had to get it. This is what I've been waiting for. I think this is what all of us has been waiting for, and especially just for a lot of people out there. That's the naysayers, especially that's been saying that the X is not going to. It's not going to sell or anything. I think a lot of people mm. are wanting the Xbox to, to you know, to 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 become, you know, the true competition to PlayStation. Because I think a lot of people just think that it hasn't been any competition. So now it's it's good to go. And yes, uh, I have to admit, I'm a sticker guy. Uh, oh, when I had the Xbox One Fat, I never took the sticker off. Well, what are you going to do though? It's covering the the emblem, man. You still going to keep it on? I, well, on the S, I, I took the sticker off, but on the oh. on the uh, fat, I never took it off. So K Mega still has plastic on his couch too. So nice though, ass. Damn right, ain't no ashy ass on my couch. Not playing. So well, yeah. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to ask you, Mega, because I know you know, we talked about you know the two systems that we're kicking off today's show with. I know we talked about them last week, but last week mm -hmm. they were just they were kind of like rumors and, and stuff like that. How do you feel about, like, when it comes to Gamescom, E3, I, I know we're YouTubers and, and stuff like that, and we want to get information, but what do, you, what do you feel about, you know, especially this generation, the leaks that come out and, and, and stuff like that, did it kind of ruin your experience with, like, the Xbox Gamescom kind of, like, live stream? Because we, we already kind of knew they were coming out. Yeah, the, the uh, show itself, the, the little treehouse thing that they did on Sunday – was uh was wasn't all that exciting it was it was it was it was mediocre at best you're not, you're not uh, ac but, bongos fan man no 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 but but the but the afterwards when they were showing gameplay of different games throughout the week that was a lot more interesting than what happened uh sunday i got you man so like i i I don't know, like, man, uh, I, I do like, I like leaks and stuff like that, but I, I like having some stuff kind of to, to be discovered at the show. And yeah, and, I, and, and, and that's why I'm saying afterwards they showed, like, they showed, they, the only thing that I guess you could actually say that was, that was entertaining during the show was watching Cuphead uh, and the lady that was presenting Cuphead. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and, and then, uh, you know, it, it just... I guess showing Forza Seven because I haven't really got a chance to really see it until until games play, Gamescom. So I was like, "Whoa, this this looks ridiculous." So yeah, that that's really about it. Except for like during the week that I was seeing other games, like they were showing Black Desert, uh, they were showing some more uh, Forza footage. They were showing other games that that nobody wasn't probably wouldn't be caring about all that much. Uh, that that caught my interest. So right, yeah, I, I hate you. the leaks though too. I yeah, I got you, man. Yo, Don, what what did you think? Knowing that you know, uh, first of all, you were you were wrong about the texture and the graphics on 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 the top of the system. Uh, I really want to hear your feelings on that. And uh, what what do you think altogether with them? You know, coming out with a Project Scorpio because you know there was a, a huge part of the community they wanted to keep that as the name, and there was a lot of people kind of disappointed with the X. Do you think it, it, it was good fan service kind of bringing that, that day one edition and having that name on the system, man? Uh, yeah, it's good fan service. I mean, if you really want a texture to be on the top and not a graphic, you may have to flip your console upside down. <laughs> but, <laughs> Ooh, but now he's nitpicking, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but in all seriousness, that's good fan service. You know, 
they they knew the diehards were they're waiting for when they can do the pre-order um and you know that's you know that's what you should be doing um i don't know i think i have the scorpio edition i'm pretty sure that's all they released uh, at first but when i was yeah. on amazon they had the old picture up i placed the order right and which i also somehow ordered a pair of leather pants which there's a longer story about that too <laughs> when i was ordering my xbox but um so but i placed the order and i go and, and I go back to the thing, and it shows that I ordered the Scorpio edition. When I click on the like little link, what you ordered, um, but the picture on my order, like this pending, it shows the the original. So I don't know which version I'm going to get. To be honest with you, the I don't really care. The, the originals don't go up for pre-order until next month, which basically is a, a couple days from now. So okay. what, when you did order it. There was there was a couple um, you know websites and stuff that you know they, they put up kind of like the the normal Xbox One X picture, but you were you were in fact ordering uh, the Project Scorpio edition, man. Yeah, so I took note with the Cuphead girl, like my like, oh cool leather pants. So my wife was kid you not. So I had Amazon up on my dude. Computer. You really got leather pants? <laughs> no, I'm not joking. So I, I, so I took note. So my wife found some for her and put it in the cart. So when I went to go check out the Scorpio and go to check out, I accidentally bought leather pants. <laughs> but, but my wife was happy because she tricked me into getting them. But like, the, like literally got leather pants with my Scorpio. You so. got kissed the ringed is what you you just got. Yeah. You just got played. You know what? No, no, what? I, I'm, I'm okay taking that L with her wearing those pants. It's oh, all good. Oh goodness, yo! Uh, if O Snaps was here live right now, she'd be like, "Well, what about the shoes?" Because that was her thing. Was the pants <laughs> and the shoes like I'm like oh goodness yo, yeah. I think she just took note that I'm like that's shiny and then she's like I got an idea and then she mm -hmm. and that's where it went from there. <laughs> she is very slick. There is a reason why I call her Mrs. KTR man. You just got you <laughs> yo that that is school. yeah you got schooled yeah. hard man. Hopefully you can learn a couple lessons from her. But um, with that being said, I know there's a lot of people excited for the X, and, and rightfully so, the more information that, you know, uh, screenshots and stuff like that that we're getting. But uh, let's cover the other piece of hardware that they unveiled, which was a limited edition Xbox One S. And it is a Minecraft edition, which um, I, I thought has been a long time coming. I thought they should have done this a while ago. But uh, complete aesthetics and everything on the system. The system, uh, you know, has that... The, uh, the dirt and the grass and stuff from Minecraft uh, it is a really nice looking system. Comes with a limited edition creeper controller. Uh, and, you know, with, with Microsoft and Xbox, they know how to do limited edition consoles. Uh, now, this thing is one terabyte and it's going to be $400. Uh, yo, Predator, what did you think about this Minecraft 1S and what do you think about the price? Do you feel the price is right as well? Yeah. Oh, man, the price is definitely wrong on that. Um, and it's a little late in the game to be trying to, you know, make a custom console, a Minecraft console with that. This is something that should have been released with the launch of the S. Um, and that would have been the perfect time for that. I mean, they were, they were coming out with a brand new console that everybody wanted. And Minecraft sells like hotcakes if they would have put this out around that time, around Christmas time. Um, it probably would have done better than I think it's going to do. However, as I say that, I'm checking the Microsoft store and it's saying it's sold out right now. Holy so, shit, really? Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, I, I, you know, some people are going to buy this because they're just, you know, they, they're collectors, they're people that enjoy Minecraft. And, and I won't lie, if, my, if this came out last year, I might have bought this for my daughter because she loves Minecraft. But like now, with that um, 1X out, I mean, this isn't something that I think most people are going to look at buying. Um, unless they're getting it because they're getting it for somebody else, like just have a collector's edition or they're just really into Minecraft. So I think the price, um, $399, a bit much. Um, they should have kept it maybe $299. Maybe yeah. even, you know, I think $299 would have been a great price for that. Is, is it a one terabyte? Does anyone know? Yeah, it, it is, is a one terabyte. A one terabyte. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So, well, since now you know it's a one terabyte, Don, what, what do you think about this thing, man? They should have made a 500 gig and then, uh, dropped at 50 bucks and i think they would have nailed it you know what i mean yeah i, I can see uh, that the size of the hard drive doesn't make a lot of sense with the, yeah because you know because you know think about that that customer base right they're they're not looking to buy huge library games they're 
their Minecraft, right? That's their main thing. And then they'll buy some other stuff. And But, you know, it's not like they're going it, to... It's not like them. And so, you I mean, say, save a little bit on it, on the sticker shock, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for your parents and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, do that fan service. I mean, they did it right. I mean, the console's phenomenal. Like, I don't even like Minecraft. Dude, I, lo- I, think I, it looks love what, I love what Xbox does with limited edition consoles, man. You look back at, like... Halo 5, uh, you know, the Gears, um, the Forza 10th Anniversary. These guys, they know how to make limited edition consoles, yeah. Yeah, so that's no doubt, right? So I, I really think, I think they missed on the price, but then again, right, you know, they sold through, so I'm sure they made tens of dollars on them. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, you'll, they'll do fine, but I, what I want them to see is after they sell through this batch, make another batch with... Fifty dollars cheaper. Put a five hundred gig in there, nice, and, and, and keep it going. So. Nice, yo! Huge shout out to the hundred people watching right now. Thank you guys for supporting this show, this channel. I, I really do appreciate it. Holy uh, shit! Indeed. <laughs> yo, uh, damn! Now I, I just saw that and I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, dude, I, I like what Predator done. We're, we're talking about this. I like what Predator said about coming out with it last year, but with this year, there is. A, <laughs> A huge kind of like update for Minecraft where they're doing a uh, kind of like a console shader mod which impro- yeah. improves the graphics uh, it's you know better water better lighting uh, it's just gonna it's gonna make the game look like to me uh, I'm gonna say a hundred times better um, so do you think they're like trying to ride off that wave as well that possibly there's gonna be a lot more people jumping in because the graphics are, are being improved on the system I'm sure it's not a bad time to do that sort of stuff, but at the end of the day, I'm with Fred. It, I think it's a definitely a day late, but it's better late than never, I guess. I guess. Well, look at this. Like, who doesn't have this game already? <laughs> well, I don't know, but it keeps <laughs> like, selling every, Dude, every keep, month, right? Like, there's, there's people out there that are buying, like, multiple copies for no reason, I swear. Like, literally, they're buying copies, going to the dump, and then going back to GameStop <laughs> and buying more copies. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. Like, that, that game is... The craziest phenomenon that I can. I swear I bought this game at least four or five times already in my life. Most parents have, right? Because like other <laughs> devices and Phone, stuff like that. Fucking tablet. Huh, am I the only one? Am I the only one on the panel that actually likes playing Minecraft myself? Yes. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, yeah. Oh man. Xbox still plays with Legos too. But there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Yo, Mega, what what do you think about the the Minecraft um, limited edition? What what do you think about how it looks? You know, one terabyte is that too much for for an S coming out now since the X is coming out? And, and what do you think about the price point, dude? Price point is too much. Uh, it's it's slick looking for you know it, it it brings out attention, you know. But I, I agree with everybody else. It's 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 a little bit too late to try to ask for. Four hundred dollars for a system uh, when you could have brought this out last year and it would have sold probably double, triple. Dude, quadruple. I don't think they would have been able to keep up with it if it, if they it, released it, it last year. Yeah. Well, that, well, that's but that's the thing. They should have. I mean, they they would have. They you know that could have went a lot further going into November of winning that MPD since a lot of people care about MPDs and things of that nature. Then to wait until now. Now maybe they what they wanted to throw this in with the X to make the, to try to win the MPD to look like the, you know, the Xbox is coming in, a, in a, coming in strong, uh, going into 2018. Don't know, but I, you know, for $400, that's pretty steep, but you know what I'm saying? It's the game sales. It's just kind of like grand theft auto Brent five. Like, who else don't it's have grand out. theft auto five or, or, or Minecraft. Dude, that's the other game. Yo, GTA five. I have no idea how that's still like topping charts mm. across the world. I, I think everybody, their grandmother, and their grandmother's cat has a copy of this game now. I agree. So that's no, that's my grandma would play, would play uh, GTA. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but it's it's uh it's it's amazing. I mean, it's it's a cool looking console. It's you know what I'm saying I wouldn't be upset for anybody that wanted to get it. See, you're not even a uh, Minecraft fan, and you can say it's a good looking console. Yo. Yeah, it's a good looking console. It's 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 creative. I mean, if you are a fan of that, then yeah, you would want to have it. That's like. You know, if they had a Tekken console, I mean, I got Tekken, I got Tekken, all the Tekken games, but 
I would cop it because it's you know it's Tekken. Tekken. Yeah. So, wait, wait, so, how do you make a Tekken console? You just rub it in ba baby oil? Is that what you do? <laughs> <laughs> you guys in baby oil today, yo. Oh, no. Tekken winking. <laughs> Dude, it's, so really it's all done. It's all done, man. He's, 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 he's going to take, you know, take care of his ashy legs and things like that. Oh, oh man. Yeah, well, well, Dark, uh, since you're chiming in, man, I know I know you have an opinion on the Minecraft console, so why don't you let us know? And uh, would you spend $400 on it, man? <laughs> Fuck no, man. <laughs> But, yo, like, come on! Yo, like, Dark, you buy I, I everything, mean, I, I though, understand. Man. No, but I understand. Like, this is catered to kids, and and you know, catered to kids, kids for four hundred gonna... fucking dollars, though, man. <laughs> well, a lot of parents are gonna go out there and they're gonna buy it because kids love Minecraft, and you know, I'd be surprised that you don't buy it, bot. Because I mean, you got kids and you love playing oh, Minecraft, dude, so you'll probably get it. I showed the nine-year-old twins. The like the unveiling, like the official uh, video mm -hmm. from uh, YouTube, the Xbox YouTube channel. That dude, was a mistake. Dude, their jaws hit the floor. But I I'll let you know right now. If there's anything they're getting from that, it's maybe uh, Evan. Evan's gonna get the pig controller, and Seth might get the creeper controller because they're gonna sell them separately. That's that's as far as that's going though. Oh well, there you go. Um, but yeah, to, to touch on, on the, the console itself. Um, yeah, I mean for four, for 400 and what, for 400 it is. Yeah. 400. Out. Dude, it, that's, 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 to that's, you, that's, man. But that's a steep price point though, man, for a, for a console that, you know, doesn't really do much. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't really enhance any of your games. It, it does bring things to the HDR. I mean, it, it is a one terabyte, but still, I mean, like. I think I got my two terabyte uh, S for the, about the same price, about the same price, and yeah, no, I no? mean, yeah. He's like, yeah, no, no. Well, I, you know, I, I do think the the system is going to be popular. I love the way it looks. I am a Minecraft fan. Please do not unsub me for that, by the way. But uh, I am a Minecraft fan. I love going in. I love messing with redstone, making, like, trap doors and stuff like that. And it's also fun because we do have uh, – how, how many – yo, Dark, how many children do I have, man? Uh, about 17. Uh, Actually, I think it's a 25 now. 25. Yeah. In, a, in a week, it went from 17 to 25. But um, <laughs> Well, it, you know, you guys just – Oh, you need to move to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I only I only need one wife, man. I'm I'm good, yeah. <laughs> no, but that's this when people have a lot of children, that's that's where they go live. They live go live in Utah. Hmm. All right, you got you got a few extra rooms, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I I like the way it looks. I think the price is too high. But then again, Predator, yo, dropping that information, man, which he he is definitely known for in the Xbox community. It's it's sold out right now. Did you say on the Microsoft Store? Or yeah, when I go to their page, it says it's sold sold out, but like I can still. It's it's there in Target, right? That's selling it. Yeah, it's, they have it in Target. When you go to their site and you go to shop other places, it, and it shows it's sold out Microsoft Store, but it still has available in Target. I got those only two stores it has on there. So I don't know about Amazon and stuff like that. So. All right, all right. Well, um, yo, Pred, I got to ask you real quick. What do you think about their decision to make it exclusive to two stores, though? Do you think that they just kind of might have shot themselves in the foot a little bit for selling these things. Maybe they're not expecting to sell a whole lot of these. I mean, maybe that's why. Um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it shot itself in the foot because you can still get the S. Um, you can still get the Scorpio. Um, Jesus Christ, the X. Um, so I mean, there's still other consoles out there you can purchase. But if you just specifically want this one, it's a, uh, you know how it is, custom console, and these things get sold out too. So it's. I don't know how many they're gonna make either. Is this gonna be like you know when they brought out the two terabyte S? Is made a certain amount of them and they got rid of them, or is this going to be like something they keep in production? So, you know, I got I got to yeah. check eBay and see like what the the pre order Minecraft ones are going for because Minecraft is definitely collectible. The toys out there, everything like that. I know people stockpile that shit, so I could I could see like on eBay this thing going for like nine hundred thousand yeah. dollars or whatnot. It, it's crazy, man. Um, but all in all, man, it, it also it gets me excited for the future of limited edition consoles with Xbox because, uh, you know, they're still doing their thing. That I, I feel like they've been on track with limited edition consoles uh, this whole generation, man. Like, every one that they have come out with has looked awesome. It's got, like, these little 
these little things to, to go with uh, whatever title that they're doing in limited edition. Because I remember, you know, Forza had the little 10th ten, anniversary side on the side, the racing stripes, all that good stuff. So um, hope maybe when, when Crackdown comes down comes out, we'll, we'll get a limited edition Crackdown console as well. And that's one, of, you know, going back to the first topic, that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to get an X because I wanted to wait to see if they're going to do a, like an Anthem custom console or something like that. So, um, and, and now that I'm saying this, I think it probably would have made more sense for them to make a custom Xbox One X Minecraft console instead of the S. That would have been crazy, dude. Uh, oh, wow. But then, like, because the core console is 500 for the X. Uh, can you imagine if they came out with something like that for like 600 bucks, though? That, uh, yeah, they could have kept it at 500. I mean, they yeah, could have kept, kept it at 500. Yeah. Uh, all, all in all, yo, know, two new pieces of hardware. Of course, you know, the X, which was unveiled at E3, but you're getting the day one edition with Project Scorpio. And I am loving the way that looks. I also love the way the Minecraft uh, S looks, but I, I feel like it's a little too pricey. Uh, in the end, there are going to be people that are going to be buying it. I think also in the end, uh, any low kind of. For people who follow like hardware sales numbers and stuff like that, I think uh, the the previous month that we just had is probably the lowest you're ever going to see Xbox One hardware sales go. And I, I feel like uh, they really turned the corner and they're not looking back anymore. Now, with that being said, I want to get your guys like general thoughts about uh, the presentation at Gamescom because... Um, you know, the two pieces of hardware were leaked, and I want to do a little twist on this. Now, I, I want you guys to think about if those things were not leaked, because I feel like that took away from what they showed. I mean, they didn't show a heck of a lot, but if we didn't know about those consoles, in my opinion, I, I thought those would have been kind of like mic drop moments um, with their with their live stream. So, I, I don't know. Dark, what do you think? Like, if, that, if those pieces of hardware didn't leak like what would you think about their their live stream to kind of kick off gamescom yeah wait for it dark dark is busy on the other line talking to his illegitimate father mr jeff goldblum um let's let's move let's move the question down then yo uh let, My bad, I, guys. <laughs> were, were you muted? muted? Were you muted? Yeah, yeah. I, had, I, had, I took a phone call a second, and that's that's what happened. My bad. Um, but what was the question? Uh, basically, if if the two pieces of hardware weren't leaked, I, w I want you to share your thoughts about the live stream that Xbox had mm -hmm. because you know it's been really highly scrutinized as they didn't really show a hell of a lot. I feel like if those leaks didn't come out for the hardware, they're they're. I, I feel like those two things would have been mic drop moments within the live stream, but I want to know what you think about that. And uh, like, what would you think uh, about that? If, if the leaks didn't come out, yo. Well, I mean, if the leaks didn't come out, I think, you know, we would have been more surprised. We probably would, you know, been like, Oh wow. You know, that's, that's fucking cool. Um, but I think since they did come out, it's kind of like, eh, but you know, I think a lot of, I don't think anything would have really helped their games come <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Dude, just spit it out, man. Dude, day, don't try to be PC about it. You just, we, we share it, our opinions it was, here, man. No it matter was, what. That, that, that conference was trash, okay? Thank you. They, they didn't, they didn't have anything that was going to really surprise us at all. The, there was just, you know, it was just all the same bullshit, you know, that, that we've been getting from them. And I was just like, well, you know, as long as I can pre-order my, my system at the end, then I'm, I'm good with that. So, I mean, that was kind of like the highlight. It was just being able to pre-order my, my One X. All right. I got you, man. Yo, uh, Mega, man. What, what... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, like four. Two times. Dude, I'm done. I'm just, yo, can I, can I just call you Diva from now on? Is that okay, Mega? Because... <laughs> Meg, are you, are yeah, you I'm, 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 I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Douglas. All right, dude. Uh, yeah. Now, try, try to get into the mentality of you didn't know anything about this this day one X, and you didn't know anything about this Minecraft S. Like, what what would you think about the Microsoft uh, live stream to kick off Gamescom? Yeah. No! <laughs> uh, yeah. Other than PUBG, uh, and then showing a little bit of. Uh, you know, showing more of Cuphead 
in, in a cuphead lady, uh, it would have been an absolute disaster. Um, yeah, no, it, it, the show, like I said, it was mediocre at best for, and that's with the reveals and everything else. It's and with PUBG being uh, revealed as an exclusive, it's it still was wasn't up to par of what people. I know a lot of people was expecting them to do what they did two years ago, which which we talked about here was that no, it's it's going to be like a treehouse event. So it just, it was dull. They kept showing the same stuff. Uh, you know, it, it just would have been better for them to do what they were doing all through the week. Like if they wanted to show Age of Empires and, and, and Black Desert and other, other games, it would have been better because we would have been seeing different type of content. But the stuff that they were showing other than Cuphead, Cuphead was the same content that we seen in E3, which oh, was uh, unfortunate. But, but you did get the Jurassic Park Evolution uh, freaking kind of like world premiere there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, <laughs> again. You got, you know, what I'm saying. And I'm a fan of RTSs, but you know, uh, it's just no. The show was the show was 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 very very was very stale. You know, mm. interviews were were too long. Dude, it was Doctor Phil with Xbox. Like, yeah, it was, it was, it was cringeworthy. at at some points, but they did their best. I'm, you know, what I'm saying this was, you know, what I'm saying I'm not knocking for the people what they what they had to do and how they did it, but it just, you know, for being to- thoroughly entertained. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that big of a, you know, it wasn't that exciting. I got you. So, Mega, basically, you're saying that next podcast called it anyway. We we tried to tell people don't don't kind of get your your hopes up too much on a like huge live like presser or anything like that more like a treehouse type thing right well they did tell us that and they warned Some us people and, but didn't listen man <laughs> yeah, yeah, well then i know and a lot of people don't but the thing of it is is that they just they refuse to you know, to listen to what sometimes a company just comes out and tell you it's just like when playstation said hey we're going to be sparse. Everybody's like, no, you're not. <laughs> Stop it. You're so funny. They Sony. got jokes. They're and, so cute when, yeah. they, when they make yeah, jokes. Yeah, and that's so. kind of like what Microsoft was like, hey, we're not going to have a full-time, you know, this this big event like we did a couple of years ago. And, you know, it's going to be more intimate. And we're just going to kind of talk about a few things uh, regarding some of the games that's coming out at the end of the year. Uh, lucky, you know, super lucky's tale, things like that. And people were like, oh, come on, Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, I know you got something up your sleeve. Maybe a new Tomb Raider or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, they, we did, were... they did have two things up their sleeve, but that shit got leaked before the show, yo. Yeah, so. I, yeah, that's I crazy. Know, man. I, I don't know, yo. Uh, Yo, Don, what what did you think about the conference, man? And and like I said, try to, try to think with the, the perspective of not knowing about like the two pieces of hardware that they talked about uh, uh well one of them was a surprise to me I, I don't think i caught the minecraft one beforehand uh so apparently that did leak out beforehand but i just wasn't paying attention that day on twitter okay um so like that was a surprise i thought that was you know all the same things we talked about earlier right you know cool there's a huge audience for it too much you know like that was my first impressions and honestly, it was like, it was just kind of like, get on with it. Like, everyone was only we're forced to watch all that stuff, right? We're forced to watch a commercial so we can buy what we want, right? <laughs> that's, that, yeah. that's really what it was, right? Hour was half a, long commercial. Yeah, that's what it was because some of those things I don't think would have gotten the attention otherwise, right? And they knew every Xbox fan that's a core Xbox fan was going to watch that show in some form or fashion. So they kind of just held it hostage uh, the whole entire time. And to be honest with you, that's, that's a little frustrating. Um, you know, as a consumer, I totally get what they're doing from a marketing perspective. I just don't think it was the right move. You already made your customers wait since E3 to Gamescom, be able to place their uh, pre-orders, regardless if it's your fault or not. Like that's something that was an expectation that wasn't met. You should just try to clearly meet that expectation. Maybe, Maybe make you sit down through like twenty minutes of it, let you to do your pre-orders on your X, and then follow up with the rest of you know whatever they had to. Sh- oh, much more of a pro move. Oh, uh, you you blacked out real quick, and all of a sudden I had no sound. <laughs> I blacked out. Yeah. What did I say? Oh, you didn't hear I, me. I don't. I don't know because you blacked <laughs> well, out. What's the what, last thing? What you did I say? 
Um, uh, 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 this, this, and that. Now, I think uh, we we pretty much got your your idea of um the show. I I mean, there was there wasn't a lot of people out there who who liked what they had to offer. Even though, like like we said, they they tried to warn that it wasn't going to be a big deal. But you know, Phil Spencer, uh, Aaron Greenberg, mo- mostly Phil Spencer. I don't know what Aaron said about the show, but Phil Spencer says, "Well, we're going back. We're doing something that we haven't done in a while," and I'm. You know, I, I'm excited for it or whatnot, and I think people kind of have a tendency to take those words and and kind of mold it to what they want in their heads. You know, uh, as soon as I saw that the host, the main host, was AC Bongos, I already knew not to expect too much. There, <laughs> he, he's well, he's like their fourth tier host. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you have you know Larry Larry Herb's the number one guy. Uh, if Larry Herb was was hosting it, like forward you know number one host on the thing then then there was there was some things to be said but um i don't don't know i I don't even remember pred did we get your your whole thoughts on the conference itself um no but i mean there's not much else i can add to what everyone else has said i mean like i did think it was it was heavily scripted i saw that they have the little cards in front of them and they're reading off of and stuff like that um i mean that was a bit much for us to have to wait just to get the release that we can pre-order. I mean, um, but I do know had they done it in the beginning, no one would have paid attention to that conference anyway. After that, everyone would have been on their computers trying to hit, you know, F5, trying to get an order in. So, I mean, I see why they did it the way they did it. I just wish they would have shown us more footage, better footage, better gameplay. Different I think, footage as well. Yeah, different footage, I say. And, and you know, go back to like, I think episode 58 of the next podcast. And we, I think we discussed this too about people getting overhyped about about Gamescom and stuff like that, where we overhype and something. I think that was one of our topics, and mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, we always do that. You know, we we expect more, and then we get let down, and here we go with with this conference, and and, and that's exactly what happened here again. So, um, it it was a shitty conference, but you know, I got out of it what I wanted. I wanted you know to be able to pre-order my Xbox One X, so yeah. uh, it just took a little bit longer to get to that point during the conference. And the PUBG news was probably the biggest thing. Um, I think everybody was anticipating an announcement. I think we all kind of knew it. But to, to your main question about the leaks, would it have been a little better? No. I don't think that would have made a big difference. <laughs> Damn, that would have made a big difference at all. I am the sunshine of the podcast today. I'm the one that's a little more optimistic. Like, yo, if, if those didn't leak out, you, you had some mic drop moments there. But, um, yo, Pred, I, I, love, I, I love how you brought up PUBG because that's actually our next topic, man. There, yo... When, when you go on social media, there are people still arguing about PUBG and kind of like its exclusive nature with Xbox. Now, I, I watched what uh, Aaron Greenberg said about PUBG, and he basically, when he was talking, he was talking about playing it, playing it this holiday only on Xbox. And, you know, he's, he's the head of marketing, all right? Like, every word that he says is, like, picked, you know, chosen – to be the perfect word for the statement. So when he says, you know, play it, you know, on Xbox only this holiday in terms of consoles, that means to me that eventually this game is going to be multiplat. And there's been this huge thing about it on social media, whether or not it's it's going to be exclusive or not. Um, Pred, uh, w- what do you think, man? Because you know they did put up, you know, Xbox exclusive, but then when they talk about it, they're like, yeah, consoles this holiday. Only on Xbox. What? What? Where do you think this game is going, like in the future? I do think it will end up on PlayStation Four at some point because the simple fact that they, if it was exclusive to Xbox, they would say it's exclusive to all Xbox. over the place. Dude. It'd be, yeah, it'd be everywhere. Um, or maybe they're still working on some 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 minor details as far as money or something like that. Um, because there's, there's nothing to say that Microsoft can't come back and say, you know what, we don't want you guys to put it there. We're gonna give you an extra. A little bit of change and some baby oil, y'all can you know, <laughs> get the shit popping. I'm so have to change the title to the baby oil edition. Man. I <laughs> but I mean, I, I do think it's going to end up on PS4, um, just simply for the simple fact that they just didn't come out and say it's coming to Xbox console exclusive only. Mm. You know, like you have to the, the way the way this this generation has been going, like you have to specify so much shit about a game that is we're confusing ourselves at this point. You know, so. Like they did, if they just said exclusive to Xbox, not it just matter, matter of fact, they said it's not coming to PlayStation 4. Just say that if it's not coming. But since I didn't say that, 
I have to assume there's still an opportunity for it to make it to the PlayStation 4. Yo, and, and that, that absolutely makes sense. Now, with that being said, because there's a lot of people out there saying, you know, how Xbox should lock this up and all this good stuff, but of course the developers have to agree to this shit as well. Um, does, does it bother you in any way? Because, like, I know PUBG is going game preview first, and we've seen games in game preview being there for, like, a year, two years, or whatnot. Uh, does does it really matter to you if, like, down the line, w- within a year or two, it, it might show up on the PS4, dude? No, because it's still going to look better on the Xbox. <laughs> Just going to put that out there. So, I mean, no, it doesn't. I mean, what, I, what I'm really not going to like about it is the fact that because Sony won't allow um, crossplay. Um, with well, my, Microsoft is trying to convince. They say that Microsoft's in talks with them. I'm not sure how how strong those talks are in terms of like opening up crossplay between the platforms. I I just I I think it's not going to happen. I I don't think like Microsoft sitting there and, and and really trying to to convince Sony to do that. But I don't I don't think Sony even opened up the email yet. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know what? Okay, as, as much as this game is selling on Steam, as much as we anticipate it's going to sell on Xbox, if they went to them and said, "Look, if you want this game on your console, you have to make it, Ooh. you know, crossplay. Use that. Use the game itself as its market as a marketing pitch. Say, if you want it here bad enough, you will allow crossplay with this game, uh, with other systems, and see how that works. If they if if they're for the players, they'll do it." That is a very good point. I, I, you know, it's it's cool that that you brought that up. I I never heard anybody so far like look at it that way to be able to use that kind of like as leverage. I do know, um, you know, Microsoft is publishing the game at least on Xbox, and in my opinion, if if it does go multiplat in in a year or two or whatnot, um, if that's gonna happen, I I would still suggest for Microsoft to still publish the game. Because in the end, you're you're getting revenue that that's going back to your first party studios as well. Um, at, at the end of the day, it's a business, and you, you can't play your heart so much. And yeah. if that's going to happen, you know, offer to be that publisher for the multi plat of this game. Um, well, but, I, wait, I don't know if anybody realizes this, but they're also using Simply Gone on that game, so Microsoft's still making money off of it. Yeah, to some well, degree. Yeah, yeah, I got you, man. But to be the publisher, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like that. When when you go to you know go to either download the game on the PS4 if it does go there or whatever you know when it says developer and it says publisher like publisher Microsoft Studios like that's some shit the right there. <laughs> 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 but I I do like that twist on on kind of like using the game possibly as leverage for crossplay. Yo, um, Mega, what what do you think about what Pred said in using the game as leverage, and what do you think about this game possibly? being a multi-plat, you know, within a year or two, man. I don't see it being multi-plat me personally. I think that You're if the game fan boy. Still... Fan bo- No, I'm just playing. No, I'm just going I'm just going by just my just my gut feeling on it for the for for two reasons. One, uh <clears throat> I kind of agree with Predator on that on on the theory that he came up with, but it also goes a lot deeper. Uh you know, the the we just seen Lawbreakers and ha- and we've seen Titanfall and we've seen other other multiplayer type shooters go over except for cod that's the only one that's been truly highly successful and that you know what i'm saying that's that succeeded you know what i'm saying pubs you can go over there and and get a lot of buzz but you know so we all know that the playstation is more primarily for a single player experience and and also you have to look at it from the standpoint of if they probably would want to do cross play you know what i'm saying cross play because i'm sure that we'll get some some aspect of crossplay with the with the Steam gamers uh, later on down the line, so you know, what I'm saying it's really up to you know the people who makes PUBG to say, hey, look, you know, what I'm saying we kind of want this crossplay thing. We you know we 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 think it would be beneficial for all of us to have this one certain network, and in in PlayStation is not going to go for it. And for the negotiations that Xbox and them were talking about, it was for uh Rocket, it was for Rocket League that that soccer cars game. No, they started yeah. up again for Minecraft. Minecraft is- oh, for Minecraft. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, what I'm saying if they can't even do that, and that's a Microsoft game, you know, what I'm saying. So, you know, what I'm saying that's just one of those things where I think if if it comes down to it, Microsoft, I think, will put out the capital to say, okay, fine, it can go across, it can go over there to the PlayStation, uh, but we want to own that property. And I think that if it is if it's profit profitable as it is right now, the potential of it. 
I think that Microsoft would just go ahead and just lock it down and just do the Minecraft thing if it would go to PlayStation. But I personally don't think it's going to go there. Now, yo, Mega, um, when, when it comes down to this, you know, people are making like an absolutely huge deal. Now, I can see that to a certain extent because it's a brand new IP. It's got uh, a lot of it, it caught a lot of steam on PC. Um, that pun was definitely intended, by the way. Uh mm -hmm. But with that being said, dude, like, why, when games come to Xbox, I mean, like, people, like, they, they, they look at it with, like, a magnifying glass, and they, they try to force, like, Xbox to say where the game is going in the future. I mean, they did it with Tomb Raider, right? And they would not let it go. But then games like Crash Bandicoot, which there's huge signs that, like, it's actually going to come to Xbox... You know, people leave Sony alone with, with those types of games. And then on the Xbox side, like Phil Spencer, Aaron Greenberg, they can't talk to the gaming media without them bringing that up, like constantly. Uh, why, why do you think this is this is going on like this? It's just, you know, what I'm saying because Sony is the darling of this generation and they and they don't and, and, it, and Sony could just say whatever they want to and nobody's going to go after him for it. I mean, for all these lists. Of games that they that they tout every year of talking about how many exclusives that they got a number of those certain certain exclusives has came to the xbox so but nobody talks about it because it was on playstation first it's just like with tomb raider we've never seen that type of uh you know what i'm saying that investigation work like it would like i i couldn't believe how <laughs> hip-hop game i think that was the last time hip-hop gamer actually got to really do really detailed uh you know uh, conversations with a developer because the way that he went after the guy at square enix to get the information to see if tomb raider was going to the playstation later on down the line or was it really uh, an exclusive and this is one of these clickbait type of deals that these articles they need people to want to read on it to get excited about it so they can say that xbox still doesn't have any games but if it's locked down for a year or two or just completely you know uh, you know xbox will lock it down like they did uh minecraft that's still an exclusive that's still money going towards microsoft and like predator said it's going to look the best it's going to run the best on the xbox i mean the pro has got nothing that can that can handle what the x is going to do with PUBG. I i mean that we're talking about we're talking about a whole bunch of people on playing on a playing on servers and 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 going at it with st all types of stuff going around Man, and if one time, if you got PlayStation fans that's playing and then there's like, oh, we're, we're got schedule maintenance, all oh, hell is going to break loose. So that's why <laughs> I don't think that it's 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 so clear. You don't think the platform is catered there. to the game is what you're but trying that's, to say. Well, yeah, it's just not. I mean, I mean it, it, could, it, could it play it? Yeah, it could play it. But the thing of it is, is that will the people out there support that game? They can talk about how they want it to come to PlayStation all they want to, but will they support it? Because they like a different type of genre of game. I got you. And when, when it comes to single player experience, I can definitely agree with you that, you know, the PS4, they they um, they do have a focus in that area. Uh, I know on Xbox, they have come out with, with titles that are single player focused as well. Quantum Quantum Break is the first game that comes to mind. I want to see I want to see more of more of that on my Xbox as well, though. I, I do. I, I really do like the multiplayer. And I know, you know, Xbox Live revolutionized, you know, online gaming in terms of consoles and stuff. But it, it's good to have that variety. And I do I, I would love to see more single player experiences on my Xbox as well. Um, with that being said, yo. Dark, what what do you think about PUBG in terms of it being multiplat? You heard what Gra Aaron Greenberg said, and you know, play it. You know, on console this holiday only on Xbox. And you know, they pick their words, man. And uh, so, do you think it's gonna go multiplat? Like, uh, I know Stick Figure in the chat said 2019. I'm gonna have to run with him on that. I think that's probably the year that it would go multiplat. But what do you think, dude? Honestly, it's it's tough to tell because I mean they do have a an exclusive exclusivity with you know um console wise right now um but i it's just so hard because we we really don't know because they're not really specific on what there's you know if we're gonna get it out if people are gonna get it on playstation or, or not you know to me it really doesn't matter if the playstation crowd gets it um you know 
more power to them. I mean, <laughs> great. It'd be like Titanfall, you know. The it'll it'll be exactly like Titanfall, or it'll be exactly like Tomb Raider, where you know it it, it went to our console first, and then they they it went to to Xbox, or I mean to PlayStation, and then they were like, oh, we're, Did you say we're Xbox? not gonna buy it. Thank you, thank no. you. It went to Xbox <laughs> no. strictly. No, it, it went it went to PlayStation, and they were like, nope, we're not gonna buy it. Never mind. We're not going to do it. And it's just like, really? Like, you're just not going to support the game just because it didn't come to your console first? Like, I, I, I never understood that really that much. But I got you, man. Now, when it, when it comes to people kind of like not letting this go, and you got to admit, they don't let this go. Like, they, they hit Microsoft so much with stuff like this. You saw it with Tomb Raider. Um, you're starting mm-hmm. to see it with PUBG now, like, you know, when Phil Spencer, Aaron Greenberg, uh, Mikey Barra are out there on Twitter and social media, there's always at least, like, there's quite a few people that are still kind of getting on their case about PUBG. Right. Oh, the- but it's okay if, the, if they get exclusives. But if, if Xbox get exclusives, it's it's the end of the fucking world. <laughs> Do you, right. do you think this is ever going to lessen up, though, like, when it comes to Xbox, like, the 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 scrutiny the the magnifying I think glass. eventually I think eventually it will um you know because I mean the X is coming and the X is gonna give it to you oh shit oh. <laughs> I see what you did there man dude what do you what do you think it, that is that what you think it's gonna take just uh you know having the X drop and then having that out there like in the world for a certain period of time like, yeah, I, I think I think what you know what the the X is going to be able to to do and and utilize you know technology wise in, in, in its in its uh, um, in its hardware, uh, I think it'll definitely you know showcase a lot of these games that that some of the you know PlayStation can't you know showcase. So I think it's it's definitely going to uh, bring something to the table that will kind of change the tide of of you know this whole you know console war and and people you know going off and being like well playstation's better because we got more exclusives well you guys bitch about us having ex- hey you guys bitch about us having exclusives and then we you don't hear us say anything about about you guys getting you know persona or anything like that so oh shut up yo with dude dark you were in the party well what i heard about persona Last night, Persona Five. There is no way in hell I want to buy that game. Yeah. What happened? What did you hear about them TK Wendy's? I heard I'm something about you. the first boss is like this volleyball coach that's having sex with like the female, like players yeah. in the like. Yes. I, yeah, the pedophile. Yeah. Uh, and I hear yo huge huge shout out to who I was talking to because I had a really really good conversation. This was only part of the conversation, mm-hmm. but they were telling me on how it's such a dark game and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, that's not my kind of dark though. Like I'm like dark <laughs> supernatural dark. I'm not like dark. He likes dark Artemis. That's what <laughs> <I mean. laughs> but after hearing what I heard about Persona, it did not it did not spark my interest whatsoever. If anything, I'm telling you, what it, uh, they didn't brag about Mara, the great the the great uh, the, the fighting demon the, that looks like a uh, like a penis. <laughs> that, that's on a chariot. They, they they love him. I'm telling you, like that. Look, I, I, I got to know, that part and beat that dude, and I was just like, Yeah, you okay, did. I'm I'm done. And, and like he and like like man, like it's crazy because because in other previous games, because I played Persona, you know what I'm saying. But I I do it like you know like you know what I'm saying me being a black man going through the hood and I'm I'm playing Taylor Swift. I'm gonna turn the music down <laughs> when I'm at the stoplight. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Persona is just one of those type of games. Oh, but it's man. like it's like this, man. It's like okay, I understand because I like uh, you know Dude, old all school we had to do is say persona, games. man. It, it's done you now. know I'm going to go, get you Mega, with it because Mega, you weird. got a half hour. You, go ahead. Look, the people will no. I just want to be quick about it. You will understand if you get you piss off the the people that that are in love, infatuated with with persona. They are a different breed of people. They, 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 I think, I swear, I think that those people that put on those fur costumes and have sex with one another, I really do. Furries. They are a different level of people. I'm just saying, man. It's I, odd. I got you, yo. Yo, first off, huge shout out to everybody in the chat. The chat is on fire, man. People are really getting into these topics, you know, sharing their opinions. Yo, huge shout out to you guys. And shout out to Mara, the, the <laughs> penis on the uh, chariot. The penis demon. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow, that's yo, a porn name right there. Yo, but uh, Genesis man said in the chat, he's like, I kind of hope th- those games that came out early on the PS4 come to Xbox. Uh, Near, Yakuza Zero, uh, Persona Five, etc. He said the fanboys would have a major meltdown. Meltdown if that's the case. I Nier's do a know. Dope game. I, dope. When it comes to Near, there is no. They're just not. They just haven't put it on the Xbox yet. There is not. There's no like exclusive deal or anything like that. They mm-hmm. just uh, they they're just working with uh, Sony and they just put it on the PS4 first. So they at any point in time they could decide to, to develop you know for the Xbox and bring that you know port that over. Um, as far as Yakuza and Persona, man, I've been hearing a lot of like crazy things about those games. It'll be good if there's a fan base out there that will pick it up on that platform. But other than that, it, those games just don't interest me. <laughs> what, what uh, hey, hey, somebody in the chat was like, Morgan Morgan of Days is going to come for you. Yes, it, yeah, he's a dude that's a real big Persona fan, and he makes videos about people that say something bad about Persona. Man, look, I ain't saying nothing <laughs> bad about it. It's just, it's just about them tinky winkies. Oh, hey. <laughs> that's it. I mean, you know, look, enjoy. Damn, damn. Yo, uh, <laughs> Don, do you want to top off anything when it comes to PUBG in terms of uh, being, you know, a multi-plat or whatnot? I, I like I like getting you into the conversation. You you kind of have a different perspective as us. Not only are you a gamer, but you are also a developer, and I like hearing your PR talk. So um, why don't you go ahead and, and hit us with some of that? No, I just really think uh, – I think we talked a little bit about this in the DM behind the scenes. I kind of picture this as like some other deals Microsoft has done. Penis demon, Don. Penis no, <laughs> stop. Stop. <laughs> not in people's ears, man. That's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's not cool. That's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like seriously though, like you, you look at other exclusive deals or exclusive like deals that are timed with uh, Microsoft – um, and I remember a time when Epic uh, owned the rights to Gears, right? And it was possible that game could have made it to PlayStation. There was some red tape they had to go through, but there was a possibility of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there are things that Microsoft did that made it complicated and, and basically just kept uh, that particular game on their platform, right? Um, and I kind of look at this situation as more or less kind of like a courtship of <laughs> the, the Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. You stupid UK. I'm sorry, Don. I'm trying to hold it in. in the box oh, no. right, we see the same thing, man. Yeah, I was trying to hold it in ever since Cyber. It was like, you're asking Don to top off after that conversation? Oh, <laughs> no. you, you guys are absolutely amazing in the chat, man. Thank oh, you so shit. much, yo. But go, go ahead, Don. Keep going. But, the, but you guys know what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I think they're just, they haven't decided what's going to go on with that title yet. I think it could go exclusive. I think it could stay, it could go to the other platform. It could go either way. I agree. I, yeah, I, I, I can add one more comment to this, too. I didn't think about this, but like, okay, remember, and I'm, I'm backtracking about what I said earlier because I thought about this while you guys were talking, but remember Rise of the Tomb Raider, how it got leaked that it's going to go to PlayStation um, right before it launched? Mm-hmm. And the yeah. damage that happened because of that, like everyone everyone who might have bought in a place, uh, an Xbox for that game, uh, assuming mm-hmm. that it was going to stay exclusive, automatically were like, well, fuck it. I'll just get it on the PlayStation. You know, and, yeah, and they never bought it. And they never bought it. Yeah, but like their mentality was like, it, it was a it was a PR hit for Microsoft then, and at least in my eyes and a lot of other people's eyes, that that information got put out by the developer. So maybe they're being tight lipped for that specific reason, because a lot of people want this game, and if they already have a PS4 Pro and they know it's coming within a year, they might just say, "Screw it, I'll just wait." This isn't Tomb Raider. This is you know, a, a, right? A, essentially, a, a really large game right now. Um, but so maybe that's why they're being tight lipped. To a certain degree, because now they are the publisher and they weren't the publisher before, mm-hmm. right? So obviously there's things in talks, right? Things are in flux, in a, in a good way between those two. Yeah. So that's my last two cents in that. Yeah, I, I think it's all about the the money issue, the 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 demand of it. You know, I, I think because you have to look at the the. the not only what Microsoft is thinking about as well as like, okay, we would like to lock this up, but we want to, we want to, we want to lock it down for the right price, you know, get some kind of bargain. Then you also got to look at the developers of like, okay, now we're, we're about to roll in the dough, but 
if Microsoft is not giving us the type of money that we want, we could probably make even more if PlayStation offers offers us a deal as well, where we could, you know, uh, port it everywhere. It, so it's, you know, it's so, not so, just about the yeah. money though. Like people always go to that, right? Mm-hmm. But it, there's different things to kind of get them on board, right? Mm-hmm. So they're giving access to Azure servers and things like that. Those sort of things that really are huge linchpins for their game. Uh, in, in regards to that, um, I'm, I'm sure they're also giving them access to Simply Gone as a Predator brought out as well. Like, you know, we're just going to hook you up, right? Certain things like that, that stuff goes a long ways. It's it's not just throwing cash at the problem. Mm-hmm. You, you have to offer more than just cash. Yeah, services and stuff that, that really mm-hmm. kind of coincide with the title itself. Yeah, yeah support. You, you have to, and you have to be good to work with. Do you mean, you know, they have to like that partnership, right? Mm-hmm. So there's, there's more to it. That's why I say, like, I really feel like there's a courtship that's going on because there is a change from E3 to Gamescom with the relationship there. They are getting a little bit more chummy, right? Um, nothing's been set in stone, it seems like, at this point. Um, and, you know, we'll see where it goes, right? But, I mean, I would say if you're a PlayStation guy and you're looking at this title, I say, I would, I would say don't hold your horses. The same token, like, if you, you're down the road and it comes out, oh, well, it comes out and you got something to play on your, on your platform. It's no big deal. But I think it's in flex. I don't think it's set in stone. Nice. Well, e- either way, um, you know, with this game going to game preview, for people who like having that kind of like exclusive title that you could only get on, on one platform, and of course, you know, there are Xbox fans, there are PlayStation fans that love having that title on just their platform, at least for two years now. Like, I, I feel it's at least two years, game preview, they're really going to like flesh out the game, all that good stuff. It's going to be on Xbox. That's the only console it's going to be on. I'm calling two years. I'm going right with stick figure. And I'm, I'm saying 2019 if it does go multi-plat. But either way, it doesn't really bother me either way. I know I do have, uh, I, I believe most people on the panel, we, we have, you know, we're multi-console owners. Except for maybe Don, I believe. But, um, I have a PC. I have several PCs. So I said I console. Guess. I said multi-console. Yeah, listen here. PC is pretty much a console these days. Oh, like, you shut yo Mega so Mega. You better nah, shut him yeah, up because you know that, that ain't shit. true. Stop that shit. You know dog. that ain't true. But, well, like, if, if I you, built a PC like Mega, yeah, then yeah, I would have all sorts of problems. But you know, <laughs> nah, <listen laughs> he'd be like, "Where did I put my toast?" <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all I'm gonna say is, in, in the end, I'm excited to play this year. Uh, it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be able to play it on. My ex, um, I know O Snaps is excited for this. She was a big kind of like she was a Counter Strike fan back in the day, and, and this game does feel like uh, this generation's Counter Strike. It could be that huge, in my opinion, and I, I'm excited, man. Um, but let's get into some other like really really awesome news, and it deals with Turn Ten and Forza Motorsport Seven. At Gamescom, the big hitting racers were there. We had Project Cars 2. We had Gran Turismo Sport. Um, and we had Forza Motors. Yo, I am so disappointed with that fucking title, man. You don't, you don't understand how mad I am with that. But anyway, but the big three were there. You know, you have Project Cars 2, which people are looking forward to. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport, which is a reboot of the Gran Turismo franchise. And... Forza Motorsport 7, and out of the big three, Forza Motorsport 7 came out with the trophy. They won the Best Racing Game Award. Not only that, but it also came out kind of like uh, the specs needed on your PC to run Forza Motorsport 7, um, the same way as the Xbox One X does in, in presentation and everything like that. And it seemed to, what was it, uh, Don, was it GPU, GTX 1080 or higher? 1080 or higher, uh, basically a Ryzen 7 or an i7 uh, on the CPU side. That That is absolutely phenomenal. Now, Don, you are in the PC space, and I know, um, you know Mega Dabble's in there, and I know Predator's in there as well. When you're talking about those two pieces for your PC, can what's, what's a roundabout price for those things? Literally, you can... Basically, for the GP alone, you can buy an Xbox One X. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. You know, it, it depends on how like thrifty you are. Like, you know, fall one, find one that falls off the back of a truck, or you know, you buy some. You know, I know sometimes PC guys were like, "Well, if I get a used one, I'm like, 
if you get a new one and you go to new egg which is like a real common place for pc people to shop that sort of thing you know you know realistically to get the 1080 they're talking about you're you're either around 450 to over you there's a range right because there's water cooled ones and stuff like that mm -hmm. there's ones upwards to 700 dollars, but like you know, really any of those 1080s will kind of do is basically what Forza, uh, what Turn 10 is saying about Forza. So, yeah, that that alone is it's a huge, huge, huge cost. So if you think about, like, people that say, well, I already have a PC, I already have the RAM spec, I already have the CPU, but if you go to buy just the graphic card, like, literally, you're talking about the cost of, uh, of an X. But, you know, that just goes to show how Microsoft made a balanced system, right? It's not just about one particular spec right you know you, you really can't quantify what they did on the cpu side of things as like an i7 or an i5 or anything like that you can't draw those parallels right mm. uh, but you know that's what's required to run that code on a pc so i mean that it is what it is and also they give a little overhead uh on that stuff so they don't like they're not like hey overclock this overclock that we're just like standard clocks this is what you would need to run that stable and it's probably a little bit of overhead to make that all happen but the problem is like a 1070 would come up short yeah. right and so it will oh, someone will say oh i can overclock it do all this, all this other like you know witchcraft to try to make it uh, <laughs> run, run like, like what they're saying right but you have to the, give you have to give a blood donation to the penis demon and it'll work yeah exactly that's what you need to do to cool your system right so um but, I mean, you can do all that sort of stuff, but at the end of the day, they have that exact same fidelity. That's the requirement on that particular code. So, you know, it just is what it is. It's not like they're trying to isolate things. They also, honestly, Turn 10 did a really good job of making it so lower spec PCs can run the game pretty decently. Um, so I think that was actually missed in the article. But, you know, it just kind of goes to show what you're actually getting with the axe. To yeah, me, I don't think to, realize it. to me, it's absolutely amazing because if you think about it, you know, using like the modified Jaguar cores and stuff, I know there was a lot of people out there who are really skeptical with what kind of presentation they were going to get for their games and stuff. Now, um, when it comes to Forza Motorsport 7, it, it won the award, you know, best racer at Gamescom. Uh, from what we've seen so far with gameplay and, and such, and I know you're a motorsport fan. You are just kind of like recently an, a, a Horizon fan, but I know you like the racing simulators, Don. Do you think that Forza Motorsport 7 could possibly be the best iteration of the motorsport series? Well, yeah. I mean, that's the case for every, every version they come out with, right? Like, well, see, like, I liked I liked uh, three over four. I, I wasn't a big uh, Forza really? Motorsport four fan, but I, I really I kept I kept playing three all the way through the life cycle of Forza Motorsport four. Yeah, I think they just keep you know they have a structure to their game development and the iterations on that hardware. I mean, on that software, right? So. They, they know what they, they have it laid out. I mean, we already know they already have it laid out for Forza of Motorsport 9. You know, like they, they know exactly what they're going to do with that game mm -hmm. and what they're going to invest to make that game happen where they couldn't do on previous ones. So um, it just, you know, it just is what it is. Like, you know, Forza is like clockwork. We can expect it. And honestly, it's really has never gotten worse. I mean, I, I had some ones I prefer. I preferred, I think, five, what is it? What was the last one? Was five? Six. 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 Okay. If, if, if yeah. seven's coming out, then well, the I'm, last uh, one was... I, I've already tuned out the number. So, right? Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, just give me motorsport. But, um, <laughs> but no, uh, I, I, thought, I thought the tire physics on five were better, personally. Mm -hmm. um, but There was more focus on that that year as well. Yeah. I, well, there's only one brand of tire where they got the data from, so it made it very consistent between each car. Um, where like I kind of noticed on six that wasn't as consistent, and then I know people that love Forza. I, I know you're one of them, dealer, and uh, you know you're gonna maybe argue me on that one. I just prefer the the tire physics on on five, but you know it, I can't say six wasn't an improvement. It was an improvement really in all fields. So nice, nice. Now, um, yo, I should have started with this guy because I know he absolutely loves Forza. He thinks it is a worldwide phenomenon that sells units, you know, from from country to country. So, Dark, do you feel like a, a proud daddy right now knowing Forza Motorsport 7 won Best Racer? And how do you feel, like, dude, I, I, am, um, I am shocked when it comes to the specs. 
I'm I'm a mm-hmm. little shocked when it comes to the sec the specs of the PC version, but I was kind of expecting it to see it actually laid out before us. Um, man, I'm my eyes are like wide right now because I know for five hundred dollars I'm getting a system that can run this game like that. Uh, so let me know how you feel about the PC specs as well in comparison to the One X for uh, Forza. Uh, before before I dip out, I want to give my thoughts. I didn't want to interrupt Don over there. Um, yeah, I I have to say it's it's probably gonna you know the, the PC specs it doesn't it doesn't affect me man like that's that, the thing that like, is that is phenomenal <laughs> though to yeah like, it, it is it, it really is and and I think you know on the X it's gonna look at, at exceptionally well um, we're gonna get a great looking racer it's gonna look you know head over heels better than you know any racer we've seen on the console before. Um, you know, especially with the HDR and the 4K um, aspects that's that's in the um, in the game. Uh, you know, it, it's just going to look. It's they're definitely improving a lot of things from six, and and um, and I think these game this game's going to really really shine and really showcase what the what the X can do. Dark, Dark loves talking about Forza, by the way. I just want to throw it's, that it's out It's a niche. There. It's a niche title, oh, but no. you know, <laughs> Wait, was it eat a mirror is what you need to do. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that, that's all my fault. Fo- that's all my thoughts, fellas. Uh, I gotta, I gotta dip out and take care of some things. Uh, have a good rest of the show. Hey, put a down payment on that eagle you're buying. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, man. All right, this Dark, Dark, ha- have a great night, man. It, it was yeah, awesome. Yeah, you guys too. We actually, uh, the topic that, you know, you had to leave on was actually perfect. I'm glad we, we got to hear you say good things about Forza, man. It, it was nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I I got good things to say about Forza. I just, you know, I, I was just, <laughs> I just like messing with you about that, <laughs> that <funny> shit. <laughs> Don't worry, there will be Goldblum gifts after the show sent in your direction, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, brother. See ya. All right. Yo, Fred, I know you, you're you also knowledgeable on the PC side. So, um, you know, let me know what you think in terms of, of the specs of uh, the PC to run Forza Motorsport 7, you know, the way that the X does. And um, I, I don't even know if you're a Motorsport fan, so I don't know if you're proud that they, they won the Best Racer Award, man. Let me know how you feel, dude. I actually am a little excited about that. I mean, I, I do play Forza. I played, I think I skipped Forza 4. Um, and I'm not, and this is just the Motorsport series. I'm This is the first uh, Horizon game I bought was, four, uh, was 3. But I usually play Motorsports. Um, I, I bought pretty much every iteration of that one except for maybe 3. Um, yeah, I mean, like, the specs are fucking ridiculous. Like, remember when I was talking earlier in this podcast, like I was saying, you know, um, well, we we're talking about Tomb Raider. I was like, you know, it looks better than what I'm running on my PC. I got, I have a 980 Ti, I have an i7 in mine, and for me to run this game with the specs on compared, comparing to what the Scorpio has, I actually have to go buy a 1080. That's like almost, I want to say about 700 bucks right now. Um, you know you what? Get... I just sent a link to Bot. So after we go over all this, I want Bot just to read the prices, just just for kicks. Yeah, just, just for I mean, kicks, huh? it's. Um, the stuff that I got when I got my, my PC made, um, I had it done maybe about a year ago, like literally about six, five to six months before I deployed. And it ran me close to two grand. And the specs they're talking about putting in this PC, I, I don't, I didn't see what he's posted, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty, pretty close mm-hmm. to that. Um, just alone. Uh, and you can get a $500 Xbox One X. They can do the same thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to get the, 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 the X, you know, so um, I'm I'm a huge Forza fan when it comes to the motorsport series. So um, oh, we good for will, them for winning. We will sport. be racing then, sir. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't like three that much. I don't like the open world racing, but I like the track racing a little bit more. Um, so I mean, but what what was their competition? I mean, like I wasn't really expecting Turismo to put up in a big fight. Project Cars, I'm a little concerned about because I think that game is going to look really well. That's going to push Forza to do better. Um, in the next iteration, and the, as, as they go forward, because you know they got project cars nipping at them, um, and now this on PC. I don't know if you guys have heard of the game called Orsetta Corsa. Um, Orsetta Corsa, really, yeah. 
It's a really mm-hmm. decent looking game on the PC side. Isn't there Not another really one called so. like iRacing or something? It came on the Xbox as well. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't look really, nowhere near what it yeah. looks like on the PC. On the PC, it looks amazing. Um, yeah. I mean, but you know, with them entering into that space as well, the PC space um, with Forza, um, yeah, I'm hoping that you know these, you know, our set of Corsa and Project Cars um, pushes them to do better and not just get stagnant like we see with with you have know, these franchise have monopolies like Madden and stuff like that. So um but good on them for you know going up there and, and all these games are releasing all these racers are releasing around the same time. So um there's there's a competition there. But if they won out there and that in the um Gamescom then they should win out here at, at the rest of the um the rest of the year with the sales and stuff. Yeah, definitely. And uh yo, I, I agree with you hundred percent competition is good. It's good to see more kind of like simulation racers out there. Uh, I know like K Meg K Mega said, a set of Corsa actually came uh, to consoles. Um, I I believe the the other game I, I believe is called I Racing. They're they're talking about that game coming over to consoles as well. Uh, nothing solid yet, but um, when it comes to Turn Ten, like even though they 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 have been kind of like at the top of this mountain for a while, it, it's cool to see them not resting either. Like they're still pushing themselves as as much without so much competition like they they're pushing themselves like they're in second place and and they've been in first for a while which is really cool to see from a uh, a developer standpoint you know what i'm saying um mm-hmm. yeah, uh-huh but with that being said <laughs> yo mega i know you're a horizon fan uh, i'm not sure if you're a a, a, a racing simulator fan as much mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. what do you think about, you know, winning that award at Gamescom? And then, you know, because you dabble in PC as well. What do you think about those PC specs to run 7, you know, the same way that the X does, man? Well, I'm not going to be buying any more graphics cards and shit like that. I'm done. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's uh, you know, I'm. You know, I wanted to get into PC gaming so I could play any game at the, at you know, what I'm saying the 1080p 60 frames per second because I was, uh, you know, or over. Uh, you know, 14, I could push a couple of games at 1440p, but the thing of it was to me was that I just wanted to get that experience to see what games look like and play like uh, on a PC and to hear those specs is is bananas. And to, and to know that a console is going to have those type of specs inside the box it it blows my mind even more and mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and for and, and for the price of like you know for 500 dollars, when everybody was complaining about it at first man we're we're stealing from xbox right now if you really <laughs> think about it we're stealing from them so you know I'm, I'm i'm a fan of all racer games i mean i'm i'm more catered to the open war arcadey style racers but uh i i have a i, I have a, a a deep love for uh gt because that to me that's like the daddy of them all to me because that was the game that got me into those type of uh, simulated racers and i played all the way through the first the first two complete i got every license went through did every race the endurance races where you had to do a three-hour run on on just one race just to win like it was like the finales like it's crazy i i just went gun ho with that and to see where where gt is what was then and where they are now it's 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 disgusting but in the bigger in the bigger picture uh gt is a much more uh worldwide sensation than forza is forza is still kind of considered new Mm -hmm. and even though it's been out for 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 what about almost uh, for about 10 years now maybe a little bit longer so it's still it's getting it's it's getting it's getting more they're, they're doing a lot more to cater to a lot more uh to a bigger demographic and f- i think right now forza 7 is really getting looked at finally even by the gt fans for now like maybe i need to switch my raising my racers uh from from me being such a fan to gt to maybe finally uh cater over to to uh uh, Forza. I think this is the app. This is the biggest moment for Forza right now in their history when it comes to actually truly supplanting uh, of, of being the true king of racers. Because if you go by the sales numbers overall, I mean, GT was doing 14, 10, 
seven, 17 million copies of a racer. So that's that's why it's the number one selling uh, exclusive on the PlayStation because everybody loved it. That was that is the, the, the it was huge in Europe. So to win that award, that says something it really does. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, when it comes to Forza, I, I do know I got a lot of friends like in the UK that I, I play games with and stuff like that. And I got to say the, the past um, uh, man, since right before the start of this generation, I, I've heard a lot of people over, you know, across the Atlantic really started to talk about Forza a lot more than Gran Turismo. And I feel like this kind of like reboot what they're doing with the almost like less is more and more online um, online contest in, instead of a, a career mode built into the game and stuff like that. I think all, all they're doing is they're basically killing the Gran Turismo franchise. I, I, they are. They I are. am thoroughly disappointed in that. I, I was right there with you, Mega. I was one of the, like, that was the first racing simulator I, I played. It was the first one I got addicted to. And when I say addicted, man, that... Uh, on my PlayStation, it was the only game I was really playing, and I was mm -hmm. like, that was the game. And and to see where it has come, it is definitely disappointing. Um, man, I, I was it's hoping, gross. I was hoping they it's had gross. a better <laughs> offer, man, because I have I have a PlayStation <clears throat> again, and I'm able to play Gran Turismo. And then I look at you know Gran Turismo Sport, and I look at Forza Motorsport Seven, and I'm like, well, damn, why? Why do I need to shell out money for for Gran Turismo with its like hundred and what forty six cars or so when I'm getting over seven hundred uh, on uh, the Forza side of things with the the immaculate physics and stuff like that and the 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 attention to detail that Turn Ten does put into it. Um, Don't forget about their custom console either. Well, that, I just, I just, <laughs> I just read in the comments, and I don't know if that's true. If that's true, that's even a bigger fail. For the United States, that they were saying that their comp that their console was only going to be uh, sent out in Europe. Wow! The, and it look that's a sweet looking console. That is a chrome top. And the yeah, that's top. sweet looking. That is real sweet. I, and if that's true, if it's only going to go to uh, uh, just only going to be in in Europe, I mean that's big for them. But you know. <sighs> worldwide that's 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 a big loss for playstation in my opinion yeah well i i saw i saw that system and i gotta agree it's actually one of the best limited edition ps4s like out there um i still put destiny the destiny one as number one the, the first one right the first destiny one with the like the map yeah with the it. gold with the gold map uh put over yeah. the top of it and then i i did like the um the final fantasy one uh slim with the moon on it i thought that looked really cool and, and and this one is right there with those two in like the top three, and uh, that is I man I'm shocked. I thought that thing was gonna was gonna go out worldwide. Well, that's in the chat. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but if that if that is the truth, then that like I said, that's that's wild. Like, why yeah. would you not promote that? Because you're in a situation right now. Nobody's gonna buy the pro, you know, and people are gonna keep continuing to buy. You know the S. I mean, well, not well the the well the Slim for the PlayStation mm -hmm. or just the vanilla. And we know that you're going to package have a good uh, package deal for it. So why not have that out in the states if you the don't problem, carry out the states? It, it could be loss. logistics. It could be they pumped out too many systems and mm -hmm. uh, stores are not buying right. So you add another SKU to it, ask them to buy more right. You know they may not just like you know what we're just going to chill out for a bit. You know. In, in regards to that, that's stores do that, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we may have a situation where everything is just flooded the market. Guys, I was checking, I was checking the GPU prices, like over five hundred, over seven hundred, over eight hundred forty nine dollars for uh, different like ten eighties out there, and are, those are all brand new, right? These are all brand new. None of these are refurbished. None of that, like that stuff. And, you know, like some have different cooling and solutions and different third party uh, vendors for the G. For that Nvidia license, um, but yeah, I mean that's this is what it costs to to do that on PC, pretty much right there. Nice, that that's freaking that's that's crazy to me. <coughs> I, like we we knew this was coming, and, and yeah. you know Phil Spencer, uh, Mike, yo know, Aaron, they all said exactly what this thing could do, but to see it actually put out there and, and have the specs for the PC side and have it matching the X, but with uh such pricey pieces of hardware on the pc it's like oh damn this 
like it's kind of like reality hits to me. It's like, damn, this shit is really happening now. Like we we've been talking about it for so long, and, and mm-hmm. like you know, Project Scorpio and what it could do, and damn, like it's right around the corner from releasing, and and we're seeing all this stuff. So why don't we get right into uh, the Tomb Raider uh, news that came out? There's been a a bunch of screenshots, a, a bunch of screenshots and i think a lot of it is due to what you know digital foundry actually came out talking about um you know games running on the x but when it comes to tomb raider uh they're they they have an extra enhancement for the xbox one x that is uh basically native 4k um they have the other like enhancements for the pro which was the kind of like 4k checkerboarding and then the the 60 frames per second at 1080p but these screenshots, yo, I, I gotta say, um, have, have have everybody on the panel? Have you guys seen the screenshots for Tomb Raider? Yeah. yeah. All yes. right. Well, Pre, what what do you think, man? Is is this like, dude? There's screenshots that actually look better than the PC version, man. Uh, dude, earlier I said that it's like it looks better than the shit I have right now, and I think I, I thought I had a pretty beef, beefy PC at the time. I got it. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm not surprised that it looks as good as it does because this is what Microsoft's been telling us is going to happen. And if Tomb Raider looks as good and it's a, what's it, about a year, year and a half old, maybe two, shit, two years old. I mean, yeah. and it looks this good. Imagine how games going forward are going to look when they're actually made for the X. So, I mean, and I see why, you know, all these fanboys out there are triggered on Twitter right now. I mean, <laughs> they've been, they've been, you know, downplaying this console since it got announced and downplaying the Xbox years and then this shit happens and so they don't really they don't really know how to react to it i hate getting into the fanboy stuff too much but i'm gonna put my hat on today for this shit but (laughs) like like you can't you can't sit here and talk shit about a fucking console this whole generation and then it comes out it's the console that we've asked for you know and it's the console that that they they were afraid of you know so here it is in your face and instead of saying holy shit that looks good they can't be truthful and they say, you know, holy shit looks good. They rather come out and say something like, oh, well, you know, make up whatever excuse they want to damage control and move to go post, whatever direction they want to move them in. It's bullshit. Because when us Xbox gamers see a good game on the PlayStation, you know what we say? That's a great looking game. Show some same fucking respect when we, when the shit happens the other way. Don't don't sit up here and get triggered on, on Twitter and whatever fucking social media sites you want to go on and get upset about it. I mean, like, be happy. This is pushing the industry. So when your next PlayStation comes out, it's going to try to top what Xbox is doing now. So this is good for everybody. Yo, no, no doubt, man. And uh, yo, it, it's cool that you say that because I, you know, a lot of the people that I hang out with that I talk to that are gamers, you know, uh, definitely a lot of you know everybody on the panel and stuff like that. But when we talk about games like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I, I think that game looks amazing. Uh, I know K Mega when talking about Hellblade, man, like the. Dude, you you praise the visuals on that thing like like nothing, man. And, right. And to see mm-hmm. people get so salty on social media, dude, I can you believe like there's a console that you know it with, with at least some points to the game. There's a console that like goes above what a PC like looks like in terms of that that title, man. What do you think, dude? Uh, it's just. It's ridiculous. I, I like. I mean, my it's, jaw dropped. <laughs> yeah, like okay. Because at first I was like, okay, well, look, this is this has got to be some kind of fanboy service, things like that. But then I I, I seen Digital Foundry, and then they showed the clip of, uh, well, they showed the piece. Well, it was the other clip, picture, whatever, and it was the pro, the PC, and then they showed the X version, where the detail of Laura's face when it shows her scars. On the right side, on the left side of her face, the and I'm dirt like, and everything like that. Whoa! Like, I'm like, why am? Why is this? There's no scars or just some bruising. Like, why? You can't be kid. You can't be serious. And then when they go in further and they show the little intricate details of, you know, the rocks or or like her, her jacket, you can see more of the stitching and the thing blood of, on thing. her shoulder. Yo, that yeah, like, that was. Snow, oh, like the hair, you know. Yeah, the hair in the snow in the hair, and I'm just like, my God! Like we have finally made it as console gamers to finally say we are we are on the we're we're on even playing fields when it comes to people that has, uh, you know, 
gaming PCs because we know more people don't have those super in two thousand, three, four, five thousand dollar PCs. Like you know, the you know majority just have more like what I have. You know what I'm saying? So, and when you have a console that is that is that powerful, you know that's that's moving the industry forward, and that should be praised because that's going to push everything ahead. That's going to make PlayStation work harder. Nintendo, I, Nintendo's is going to be Nintendo. They, so they just I do whatever should, the fuck they want to do. Yeah. That's what they want to do. <laughs> you might but, yeah, but for the PC, that's going to make – I think that, that just made everybody drop their jaw and say, damn, Microsoft is coming with it. And everybody started wiping – you know what I'm saying? Start getting excited, put a grin on their face. Let's get back to work, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get back to start making something more powerful, more better, yeah, and, and more accessible for, for the gamers out here. That's what we should all be excited about as gamers. This scrutiny is just so dumb. Yeah. Like – Damn, like Hellblade is a beautiful marvel. It is it, it's not for everybody because it's not all action packed. It's more of, it's more puzzle driven, but it, it, it's but it's a it's for for how many people that made that game is a is is marvelous. Like kudos to them. And that's it's a game where you have to appreciate stuff like this. That's 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 all I can say. Nice, nice. All right, we we got to hit the developer of the panel on here. Yo, Don, what did you think when when you saw these screenshots? I, I think there's more and more coming out like on, on Twitter and, and stuff like that. I know when uh, there, there's a guy on, on Twitter. He goes by the name of um, uh, P.S. Coys, and I know a lot of people don't like him, but I, I've given him like yo know, patience. Me and him are actually friends, and he shared like the screenshots with me or whatnot. And I had to ask him if that shit was real. Like, I, I was like, are you trying to mess with me or whatnot? But, yo, Don, what what do you think about what you're seeing in terms of screenshots? I know it's not fluid animation or anything like that, but are, are you – is this overproducing what you thought, like, the X would do? No, it's what I ex totally expected the whole time. Uh, once they officially announced the specs, that one E3, a year before it was, you know, this E3, you know, like, that's what I was expecting the whole entire time, and I – I knew what to expect, but I was more excited for this stuff to finally come out for you guys to finally see it, right? For me, like, I'm always developing things in a higher detail than what you're even seeing on the Tomb Raider game, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'm downscaling it to, to work with, you know, hard, hardware. So for, for you guys to finally see all the detail that has been missing, right, in games, you're just guys are just now seeing it for the first time. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for all gamers to be able to have that, right? And, you know, it's not a shock, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad everyone's starting to see it now. And, you know, I'm a big component. If if you can see it, then you can justify, you know, justify your purchase. If, if you can't see it, then, you know, think about picking up the S, right? You know, just play what you want to play on the fidelity you want to play. I mean, that's, that's options for customers. It's nothing but good things, right? Yeah, definitely. Um... Whoa, I I had a good question for you, and I and I just absolutely like forgot it. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna ask about some sort of detail picture or something like that floating around. No, um, you know it's funny when it comes when it comes to the X because I know we have like the Xbox One like family of machines. Now, uh, for people who don't know, at least on the Microsoft Store online, um, they stopped selling the original Xbox One or whatnot. Uh, dude. I, I, I got to say, I really like what Xbox is doing here because this seems to be a, even though it's called a mid-gen like refresh or whatever, it really feels like Xbox, Microsoft, they're doing away with these generations and it seems like every time they come out with a console now, it's going to be one of these type steps forward and uh, it, it really has me excited with kind of like the Xbox ecosystem and how they have now kind of rearranged how they're going to put out hardware and, and how they're kind of like squashing the generations. Um, do you, do you feel like they're they're the way that they're doing this? First of all, do you see what I'm saying with how like, they're just going to do like different iterations of the same family from now on and how like the X kind of proves that? Man? I think they're committed to that, uh, at least on the Xbox side versus the PlayStation side. We'll see what PlayStation goes with, but um and I, I think, honestly, from I'm hearing from the developer buzz and, you know, I, I call it water cooler talk and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, they're on board, you know, with the iteration thing. They were kind of 
some people I knew were kind of iffy about it, but most of the higher ups were on board. Now with the axe and them getting the hands on the axe and how easy it is to hit those benchmarks, uh, they're they're all pro for these iterations, right? And so I mean that's you know I always look think about the back to the three sixty era, right? It's eight years, right? About four years you're starting to lose customers, right? Either to a competing platform, PC, or just just not gaming anymore because there was nothing fresh for them to play, right? Mm-hmm. There was nothing that made their games even better or what was coming out better, right? And some people, like, I know some people that are still buying 360s when the Xbox One just came out, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. so there's some people that don't want to move on quite yet, right? And so this whole ecosystem, it keeps the customers engaged. It allows them to buy in where it makes sense for them. Um, I mean, you know, I'm buying an X that's $500. I'm subsidizing the cost for people who are buying the X probably the following year, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, the console may get even cheaper down the road. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, it all makes sense. It, it helps developers out. I don't really see the S or even the standard vanilla PlayStation 4 really holding the industry back by taking this iteration uh, hardware approach because you're just scaling assets. That's all it is at this point. Right, yeah. You're just scaling textures. You're scaling. Well, and then, then you're and adding stuff. into stuff like when it comes to Anthem. We we I think we all expect that on, on the the one X when it comes to the game Anthem, you're gonna see a, like a lot more foliage, uh, you know, in, in the forest areas and, and, and stuff like that. But you know, they're gonna they're gonna scale all that stuff stuff down to a certain extent as well to play it on the S. Yeah, yeah, but that. But that doesn't affect the gameplay, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, so you're still able to play the game, and you you got the experience based on the piece of hardware you purchased, right? And you invested in. Mm. So, and your games are going to continue to look better on the older systems. Oh, I remember like, the question. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go <laughs> no, go for it. I remember. The, yo, when when we first started talking about like uh, Project Scorpio, even to a certain extent, um, the the PS4 Pro. I know there was a lot of people out there talking about. Well, developers aren't going to take the extra time to put this in, to put that in. Uh, with what we're seeing now, you know, Digital Foundry, um, you know, looking at the these games, they came out with a video about, you know, games running native 4K on the X. Uh, and, and seeing, like, um, you know, Tomb Raider, which is, you know, a multi-plat, and, and the, the time and attention to detail that they're putting into that. Do you think uh, the majority is going to be what we're seeing from Tomb Raider? I, I know there's going to be kind of like what they call lazy developers out there that are just going to do the bare minimal as well. What do you think is going to be the majority when it comes to the, the developers in the community? Do you think it's going to be the bare minimum? Or do you think they're going to really put their time in and do kind of like what we're seeing with Tomb Raider? I think with the bare minimum, that's Microsoft took care of that problem, right? Um, that's the reason um, why they yeah. have more enhanced titles. They made it so the X was easy to develop for and port over. And in the case of Tomb Raider, like it's not like they're redoing her clothes or her jacket. I mean, the texture coordinates were already there. They already had a, a higher level asset that they had, you know, at the company, right? And all they did was not scale it back as much. That's that's all they did. And then they swapped out the texture and they they put it in the game. So like these sort of things i mean they take work i'm I'm like oversimplifying it right but you know the reality from from an art perspective of what i do the art assets are always a higher level of detail than what you're getting even on this x right to give you an idea like i'm working in 8k texture assets right now like so (laughs) so to give you an idea so we we still haven't seen where this stuff can go right Mm -hmm. i mean as, as gamers you guys haven't seen it yet right i see it Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't run on a game, but eventually that stuff will, right? So when you're creating that high level of detail and you're basically are able to just not scale it back as far, that's all we're talking about here. Nice. So the, the game development hasn't changed in any sort of way, right? They may evolve the engines a little bit so they scale better, like in a, like in a foliage like standpoint. I can see that being the case. Um, NPCs, so, those sort of things, but that's really about it. So with, with all right. Now, the X compared to the Pro, just for comparison standpoint. So, like, uh, doing something with a Pro version on the PS4, um, because, like, it's mostly checkerboard, you know, uh, unless it's smaller indie games that are doing, like, the native that, 4K. And that, or takes, 
that takes more work than that's doing what i was going to yeah was asking. so you know and that's the thing is like in people will want to downplay an axle if they do choose to do a checkerboard right it's not about it's about where they're checkerboarding from right it's where the base resolution is that's mm -hmm. where the real difference is versus what they're trying to you know take that temporal reconstruction and make it right so um so a lot of playstation games are 1440 it is what it is it's higher than 1080 it's a better resolution right mm -hmm. but you know you get a lot of ones where you're on the x it's like 1800 right so that's a much higher resolution to start with and they're checking board up to 4k when a developer decides to do that they're deciding to do more work okay. right when they're doing that on the x and people don't really understand that because the reason why they do that is they're like well i want to apply the power to these effects so let's do this resolution and let's upscale to to 4k mm -hmm. so if they're choosing to do that they're choosing to do even more work on that platform where they could probably scale some of some of those effects back and just do 4k does that make sense and yeah the effects wouldn't be scaled back any worse than what the base model system was just not as much as if they decided to do a checkerboard technique with their particular game so you know you're and I, i'm not trying to down on ps4 pro i've always been a very pro Dude, i always put you in this corner <laughs> yeah i've always been a pro you know component like i think it's a good it's a good system for for what it is but you know its maturity is happening this year right as far as the console and the stability and what developers have decided what they really want to do with that particular system right mm -hmm. and but it is you know it is a half step console like and i don't mean that in a bad way it literally is the in-between step between this and what their ne next thing is. Xbox One X, we call it a, a refresh, right? But it literally is generational leap level of power. Yeah, that's, that what, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a, like even though it is a, a, what they call a mid-gen refresh, like that, that power that backs it up. So now, like in terms of what they do with cell phones, like eventually your, your old iPhone isn't going to run the apps that, you know, you would get. Like over time... The Xbox One X is going to be the base Xbox One in the family, and and that's when all of a sudden, like, it, it goes to more than just graphics as well. Like, the games will get that much bigger and, and, and stuff like that, right? Well, we have plenty of overhead left on the base consoles. People don't realize that still. Like, now you take the pressure off of being a certain native resolution on that console, if that makes any sense. Okay. Now, those consoles can grow. The baseball vanilla in like it's called the s for now because that's all microsoft's selling at that level right those those consoles got to actually flourish and grow we can get, get those bigger worlds and those things that people have been talking about right so and we have been getting bigger worlds just so everyone knows like the 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 play space has been getting bigger the texture resolution is getting bigger right mm -hmm. but now these things can really start to take off and not have such uh like uh, shackles to them like keeping them you know, that's always been about that base resolution since the launch of these consoles. And now you take that pressure which, off. Which is such a stupid argument to begin with. Yeah, so now you can take that pressure off on that hardware and they can just kind of do what they need to do. So, you know, we haven't seen what the base models can do. The, the more the more powerful consoles, a good point. still have plenty of room there. And I honestly believe, at least on, this is my theory, on the Xbox side of things, most likely time will prove me wrong, is um, I think we'll have three generations that are always currently going. Um, so they may drop the S, but they will still support like the S level mm -hmm. as, as, as they go forward. And I see that I can see that happening uh, for the later adopters. Right. Right. Nice. Nice. Hey, guys, I know, I know we're uh, a little over nine o'clock. Do you guys have uh, have time for one more topic? There was one more thing. I well, I just wanted to say one one thing. Uh, no, 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 man, no, I can't. Nah, go ahead, man. What's up? Well, I mean, damn, you're gonna let Don talk for forty <laughs> freaking minutes. No, I'm <laughs> no, I just, I just wanted to say, I wanted to agree with Don was saying that this is the one thing that it's. That's why I've been saying that the Xbox One X is basically future proof, for the mere fact that because there are later adopters that's going to come and they're going to buy the Xbox One S or they can buy the X at later at later on when the price comes down. While we'll probably be moving on to something else, mm -hmm. when when he said the whole recuperate, you know, the the early adopters, you know, are the ones that pays the money, go through the heartache of of them, you know, of having bugs and things of that nature. But I think with them doing a complete, you know, it like this is like the Xbox Two. This isn't, you know, this isn't like a like a normal mid gen system. I think that that's what's going to make the Xbox One X 
go longer than what people will think oh, of. Oh yeah, you know. So that's what I was going to say. Dude, that that is nothing but common sense right there, Mega. Yeah. Yo, I, I love when people talk common sense. No, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. Um. So, what do you think, guys? You got one, one more topic in you? Hurry up! All right, all right. Here's the deal, <laughs> yo. Our our buddy, head of marketing at Xbox, Mr. Aaron Greenberg. Uh, when it yes. comes to the bias gaming media. Uh, it seems that he said some things that some people don't like, all right? Uh, one thing is when it comes to Xbox exclusives. Uh, guys, if you don't mind, I just want to read what he has said real quick, and then I want to I want to get your thoughts from that. Is that all right? Go for it. All right, here we go. The first quote from Aaron Greenberg. People pick Xbox One because we have the biggest franchises, the biggest exclusives, whether you are a fan of Halo or Gears of War, or Forza. All right, so with that one right there, and I'm going to go to the next one real quick, um, a a lot of people, I feel, misinterpreted what he said because once he said the biggest exclusives and and stuff like that, he came with with the three examples that he was thinking of. But then after that, he put, he, uh, he said... This uh, this holiday, personally, I'm really excited because Xbox One will be the only console where you will be able to uh, play Forza 7, Cuphead, and Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which are which we are super excited about. Also, um, timed with the Xbox One X launch, we have Super Lucky's Tale, um, which is exclusive, and it doesn't stop there because into the spring, we have. Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, and Crackdown 3. So we're basically non-stop hitting our fans with more and more, more and more exclusive titles. So so there will be tons of, um, tons of great games to play. Now, he has been under scrutiny from the gaming media when it comes to these quotes. And people are like, well, where are the exclusives and, and, and stuff like that? So... Uh, Mega, I'm I'm pretty sure you got some opinions on this, man. What do you think <clears throat> about what he said? Was it was it right in your opinion? Was he off the mark in your opinion? And uh, does the gaming does the gaming big gaming media do they have a leg to stand on with their arguments here? Okay, let me just make this point. Um, 1080p will make you a better gamer. <laughs> um, uh-uh. <laughs> PlayStation Pro can do eight teraflops. <laughs> uh, what was it? What was that game? Oh, Watch Dogs. It's 1080p on the PlayStation. And also... 60 frames to, per second. It's, yeah, 60 frames per second. And also, Killzone is uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second, all over the place. Listen, fuck them. Let Aaron do what you do. Because it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. They want Aaron to add. To, they want Aaron Greenberg to say to to start getting out there, start advertising his ass off, start letting people know we love Xbox. Xbox is great. Everything else. But then when he comes out and he talks about his his lineup of games for the Xbox and get try to get people excited and ex, and, and and just like you know captivated into the gaming lineup, regardless of however you know Xbox fans feel about the lineup. It still sounds good to me because he is that's his job, right? That's what everybody's been asking him to do. So now you're gonna scrutinize him because it doesn't sound right to you? Get the fuck out of here. Let me tell you another thing. Okay, PlayStation, the remainder games that they got until the end of the year. I'm gonna go ahead and read a couple off. I was talking about that on GRG last night. Check it out. The lot Nat 2, and then that crazy named game I was telling you about. Whatever the hell this game is called. <laughs> You just sound uh, it, like Raiden, man. <laughs> listen, okay. It's I, I wanna I'm gonna say it again, so hopefully anybody in can, can help me out. U T A W A R E R U M O N O. That's the name of that game. You anybody got a guess? Uh, man, yeah. I can't I can't I can't even You are the Marona Row! <laughs> okay, that's what i So okay, then Blue Reflection, uh Dragomon Robert Pa V3. Killing Harmony, that's all one word for a name for, for the game. Uh, that comes on the 26th, Gundam Versus, and then Gran Turismo. That's it. And you mean to tell me that the Xbox lineup, 
at the end of the year can't stand up to that? Nat 2 and Gran Turismo is the only games that stand out. That's the only two. So yeah. what you mean? You tell me you, you, you can't. Look, I'll put uh, Super Lucky Tail against Knack 2. I'll put PUBG against any motherfucking thing they got coming on this list. <laughs> I know Brad agrees with Together. you on that one, man. You know <laughs> Together. You know Gran, Gran Turismo against a four to seven, not even close. So Aaron Greenberg, do your work. Do your work. You know, fuck the what the media is saying. You know, Mega. Like it, it's funny because when I when I read this right now, I. I I watched a video from the No, and I absolutely hate the No, but I I love to hate the No because they just they they twist things so much on their YouTube channel that it's almost like it's almost disgusting, right? Now, when he talked about the biggest exclusives, like he gave you what he was talking about: Halo, Gears, Forza, right? He talked about what he was excited for with the holiday and, and then that Super Lucky's Tale is exclusive. But also PUBG is the only place to play on uh, on console this holiday is Xbox. Um, then he says, but not only that, going into the spring, we have, you know, Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, Crackdown. So we're basically hitting our gamers with more and more exclusives. Basically what he's saying, this is the start of the change that's going on where Xbox used to be really heavy on the holidays and, and maybe not so much the rest of the year. He, th this is what he's trying to state to people. And to me, it was just absolutely, um, it was insane how his words got twisted and people were like, well, where are the exclusives now? You don't really got nothing for the holiday and shit like that because of crackdown. Like to me, it was clear as day, but I don't know. Yo, Pred, what, what do you think about what he was saying? And, uh, how do you feel like the big gaming media is treating like his quotes, man? I think they're looking too much in it because if you think about what he's talking about, none of that was false. Does, you know, it, those, does it make sense to you, man? Yeah, it, it does make sense to me because all those franchises he's named, the, the three biggest franchises he named, you know, they're three big franchises. They're also exclusives. So like um, he didn't say anything false. I think what people are getting caught up in is the beginning of the year when we had like this just dry spell. And they're still hanging on to that aspect of it, like like as if as if PlayStation didn't have that a couple of years ago. Um, in, in what you say exactly right, they're switching the focus and getting away from announcing, uh, releasing, you know, four or five games during the holiday against all the other third party games. They're going to start shifting and doing what what Sony has, has done and put their games at the beginning of the year. Um, put all See, the I, I think they're the actually so, going to spread them. There's going to spread them out more than like even what Sony does. I feel like uh, when it comes to like the the Halos, Forces, and stuff like that, they are they are slotted for the holiday. Yeah. But uh, you know, a lot of maybe their newer IPs and stuff are going to come more towards the beginning of the year into the spring. Yeah, and that's sure. a better spot for them because if they come out with all the shit that comes out at the end of the year, man, they're just competing against all that stuff. So, um, you're right. I mean. Um, I also want to say this too because I think with 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 what just happened this past week, um, you know, you got you got Aaron, you got Shannon, they're on the hot seat right now. Oh yeah. Um, and I think I think they're 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 going to become more vocal because I think that's what they've been told they need to do if they want to keep their jobs. You know, because like we're Salt asking, Salt yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, you more so more so um, Aaron because like I mean, not saying he's the one that I think should should go. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through that debate right now, but like. He seems like the more person, the, the type of person that will do it more because he's done it in the past. He's kind of just throws little jabs out there every now and then, um, and so he's you know he's going to ramp it up a little bit, especially with the launch of the X, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then you know you got Shannon. She she's part of the the I guess the process of getting PUBG and all these other games that we've never heard of onto the console. So like that's her job. And so what we've complained about this whole generation: marketing, communication. And third-party exclusives that's their two jobs so like that's that's why they're, they're they're the ones sitting on that fucking stage um at gamescom that's why they're there and phil's not mm -hmm. they, they need to step out in the limelight and do their job a little bit too and get put under the fire yeah like at, fir at first aaron wasn't supposed to be there but man plans change really really freaking quick yeah uh, i think that crackdown uh situation kind of brought some things to light um when it comes to uh communication within the xbox division again i don't work for microsoft so like don't nobody we're, take we're, this we're just work, kind of like, we're, you know it's our opinions and like yeah we see shit. I, I can easily see you know 
you know, the whole crackdown fiasco and, and like they're sitting at a freaking table and they're like, you know, what the hell happened? And Shannon has to sit here and answer to this. That's her job. Like, why is this not working? Why is this not going where it needs to go? And why did I know about this sooner? Because at E3, we announced this was coming out in December. And she's got to answer that. So she's in the hot seat for that kind of shit. So, like, I mean, I'm glad that they're stepping out and, and being more vocal. That's what they should have been doing mm-hmm. the whole generation. Yeah, definitely. Now, when it when it comes to what he said, though, like, to you, did did it, when, when you first saw it, did, was it clear to you? Did it make sense? Like what he was saying. It made sense to me. However, I think the timing of saying something like that after losing crackdown for the That's holidays and, and 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 you know, you know, our dry year this year, you know, <laughs> with exclusives, like that is not something you say on that stage at that moment. That's something you say in an article in a newspaper that's gonna get buried somewhere that no one ever hears. You know, but like that's you put that out there on front street during Gamescom when millions of people are watching to get the 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 time they can actually hit f5 and enter and get their console and you put that out there because not only were xbox fans watching that so were sony fans mm-hmm. so he's gonna get back but again this is the media they're always gonna backlash against microsoft he could have came out and said nothing like that and still <laughs> they would have been like why is he so quiet this is yeah why didn't he say <laughs> the problem with xbox they don't they don't promote they don't do what this they don't do that and it, it's ridiculous look I, I there's been mistakes made there's i don't think anybody the, the even the most diehard xbox fan can damage control the mistakes that's been done on, on from the from the xbox staff there's been a lot of them but i begin i keep saying that these guys are are new to their positions and there's going to be mistakes made and as rapidly as they're changing the mistakes and ma- and correcting the wrongs that's got to be accounted for something and i understand yeah. that, that 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 aaron and, and shannon they and got, they might be on the hot seat or whatever but for everybody saying, give them the axe, give them the axe, give them the axe. How would you feel if you was put in a position to where you were a you were customized, a, a custom, you, you 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 were in a position to where you did something different or was told to do something different, and then the sky fell on your ass, and then you have to go in and change your whole your whole outlook of how you trying to do something else. And then you got people in the background, fire your ass, fire your ass, fire your ass. That's just added pressure that these people don't need. If, if, if by, by this time coming up here next year, if E3 doesn't seem like it's get, gotten any better, if there's no, there's no exclusives to, to be presented, uh, uh, you know, from the first party and things of that nature, the advertising sucks, things of that nature, then we can start getting into that mode. But give these people time. That's all I say. Yeah, definitely, Mega. And you know what's funny, man? Before I before I move on and get get um, you know, the Don's opinions here, uh, throughout Gamescom, right? I, I have you know friends that were over there, uh, you know, playing games, doing this. There was there was a buzz within Gamescom. There was kind of like. Uh, um, a rise in uh, kind of like theories about Xbox exclusives. I guess there's like Xbox people out there, um, you know, kind of whispering in people's ears this, that, this title, that title. Uh, one of the main buzzes within Gamescom is that um, going in from, you know, s- you know, springtime 2018 and all the way through, like Microsoft is going to really start dropping some, some, first party exclusives like no like people haven't seen before um and it, this was just uh you know stuff i was getting from from my friends that were actually over there um i don't know have you heard anything about that as well or dude they're they're, they're kind of there there's there's like whispers going on and there's like this this momentum that's going in in the ballpark of xbox now in terms of exclusives going from the beginning of 2018, and they're saying that there is a train coming that, you know, next year's E3 is really going to show a lot more on. Um, I don't know. I'm excited, man. And I, I saw exactly what Aaron Greenberg was saying, dude. I have no idea. Like, uh, I, I couldn't believe that somebody would kind of twist those words that way. But then again, we are dealing with the big gaming media. Um, <laughs> on that note, yo, Don... Um, what did you think about what Aaron Greenberg said? Do you think uh, he was on point with what he said? Um, I know Pred made a great point with, you know, there's a time and place and that might not have been it. I I don't necessarily agree with that. I was like, man, you, you put it out there. And then, you know, as the games start coming out and as we get into the spring, you got the heavy hitters coming out with Sea of Thieves and State of Decay and Crackdown and stuff like that. 
I, I feel like it's the beginning of that roller coaster where we're climbing uphill now, but I, I can see that hill going downward, man. But w- what do you think about what he said and uh, how the media is kind of interpreting it? Yeah. You know, people are going to interpret things how they're going to want to interpret them, right? Um, there are some people that are upset Keywords on that. Keywords want to. I, 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 I could dig that, man. Yeah, there's people on the Xbox side that are legitimately frustrated and pissed off. Like, you know, I don't want to take away from the their their thoughts and how they feel. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it doesn't mean he stops doing his job, right? Um, and what you do in in the face of a of a bad situation, right? You you acknowledge it, you move on, and you go forward with what your job is, which is to market the stuff that you have. Um, and I feel like his hands have been tied this almost this whole entire generation. And now they're far, and he started to, you know, uncouple that and let him just kind of do what he needs to do. And that's a good thing. Um, you know, I, I don't think he should be throwing shade at the other side or anything like that. But uh, but just kind of stick stick to the facts of what they're offering. I mean, I think that's all we've been asking for is I think I have heard so many podcasts with so many different Xbox fans. You just want just stand stand your ground and tell us, you know, what you have you know and and don't let people dictate or narrate you and and i think that's not a, not what he's you know that's what he's doing right now he's not letting people you know rain on his parade and he's telling us exactly what what he has there to offer and they're all truthful facts and you know you can't look at what he said and say it's not true right yeah that and that, that's what i'm saying like people are like well where are where are these exclusives that he's talking about where Where are, like, you know, the people buying the Xbox Ones for what games, like, this holiday season? And um, I was like, what are you talking about? He he pointed out exactly the franchises he was talking about. He talked about what he's excited that's coming out for the holidays. And then he talked about, you know, not too far down the line, you got, you know, these, these other big games coming out. And to me, he was just talking about how this is this is the start of that that more kind of spreading out the like the exclusives and the games and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I, I thought it was plain as day to me, man. You know, well, the one thing is people always try to poke holes into what Xbox tries to promote all the time, right? Like, we've seen it over and over and over again, right? So the thing I want to see from Greenberg, that, I mean, this is a good first step, right? But it's just keep keep your ground. State the facts, right? And if someone has a, that sort of problem with it, that, that's their problem. That's not your problem right you're speaking to your customers at at the end of the day right yeah and you know it's not like they didn't you know acknowledge crackdown they did it in a professional manner you know it wasn't the best situation but they did it right and and then they're they're moving on right now right they're they have to look forward in order to release that game they have to look forward to all the other games that they plan on releasing i mean you know sea thieves i mean i'm not really that excited about it but man everyone Everyone keeps talking about that game, right? Oh, dude, so I got, I got so. <laughs> they were talking about it last night. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I was hearing. Yeah, you know, like, that was actually what sold me a little bit on this last night. Is uh, hearing Bone and them like they didn't really describe me anything, but just like the organized chaos, which is that game, mm-hmm. right? That that they were playing. I'm like, man, damn, that does sound fun. Like, sound like sound like a blast. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, so like they have things to look forward to. They just need to, you know put their head down and just keep promoting what they have there to promote. Um, and, you know, and just, you know, fall through with the promises, right? You delay crackdown, make sure it comes out. That's all yeah. I ask. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I just, I really wanted, uh, cause I know we were, we were getting kind of like into overtime there, but I really wanted to put that out because to me, I thought it was absolute nonsense what was going on, you know, when when it comes to Aaron. He's on a, he's on the hot seat as as of right now, and and to see like the the big gaming media kind of like really twist the words and stuff when I when I thought what he was saying was was right on point. You know, um, he he said he was excited for PUBG. Uh, he said you know he was excited for Cuphead. He said Super Lucky's Tale is exclusive. Uh, you know. He, to me, he was saying all the right things. And then right around the corner, you know, we have Sea of Thieves, we have State of Decay, we have Crackdown. And basically he's saying, this is just the beginning, guys. We are spreading these suckers out. You're going you're gonna to get more announcements. By that time, by the time, like, the end of spring, you're looking at E3 uh, in June. 
So you're you're looking at now. Here comes another round of announcements and and games that are coming out from that point in time until the next holiday. I, I feel like this is the beginning of, like I said, that roller coaster, man. We 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 are just gonna have a blast. We're gonna be putting our hands up and and, and going along for the ride. And I I, I feel like um, Xbox is in a good place right now. I I, I don't yeah. know. I saw it. Man. I, I also think software sales also kind of hurt the le- the release of a mid gen uh, cycle because you saw when PS4 Pro was released and you saw the PSVR that's a lot of hardware right and that did suck up quite a bit of dollars and if I remember correctly the last last holidays um, sales on software were down at least from what we can see from physical sales right so you know maybe they were looking at the situation releasing hardware and just like maybe that was a bad idea too we don't want to suffer the same situation where we lose that steam because you can only do a launch only once yeah well look at the numbers though i mean go back and look at them and just kind of take a look and see if that factored into it i I hear what you're saying man but i i me personally i think that's a little far-fetched i feel if if crackdown was completely ready oh that shit would be coming out november 7th no doubt you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. I, I can kind of see where you're coming from, but I'm not, I'm not sure if that, if they're, if they were going that direction. I know, I know Microsoft loves numbers, though. I know, like they, they look at, you know, active users. They, they love number sheets, man. But I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think with, with uh, Don's kind of like idea of what might have been going on in terms of like, you know, coming out with new hardware. The, the, the software sales numbers were down. Do you think that could have been? part of the equation for this holiday i think they had it set up already and it's thing shit just happened you know and yeah maybe they decided to just roll with it after the fact you know okay you know maybe this is a good idea to not do this now but maybe it's like a blessing in disguise it's all that other shit storms has happened with, with crackdown and stuff like that I, I don't know if it was planned i don't think it was i think you know they've been touting this holiday lineup for a while um and you know when you know shit happens you got to make adjustments so mm-hmm. um I'll just go with it that way. I got you. I mean, it's 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 cool to see it from, you know, right field instead of left field sometimes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I definitely love, like, the idea. I'm just not sure if that's exactly where they... I don't think it was a deciding factor. I think it was just kind of an, oh, well, like, you know... this. Oh, well, and you know they, I mean? they had like, numbers to fall back on after that. Yeah, exactly. Like, that. I think it was kind of one of those things. Like, when they're weighing everything out, there was a lot of other factors, a much more important one I'm trying to say. But I'm just saying, like, you know, that, you know, that could have been one of those things like, OK, we're already kind of going there. The things are not lined up between multiplayer and uh, campaign. You know, what? The, screw it. Let's just do this. And, yeah. You know, and, and just roll with what we get this this holiday. So I got you. I mean, in, in the end, uh, one of the things Phil Spencer, you know, he came out in an article and, you know, people were talking about exclusives and he kind of threw it out there like this. He was like. There was three things I wanted to do when I became, you know, the head of the Xbox division. He was like, first off, I wanted to deal with the hardware. And he was like, you know what? We came out with the S last year. The X is coming out this year. Basically, check that box. That's done. He was like, the next thing I wanted to do is I I needed to put, and I think this is for Microsoft as a whole. He's like, put Xbox Live on mobile, on on, on multiple platforms like iOS, Android stuff, and and let people decide where they want to play. He was like, basically, check that box off. That's done. He was like, and, and the third thing I really wanted to do was to double down on first-party exclusives and first-party studios. Now, I have a tendency to believe him here because he accomplished the first two things. You see what I'm saying? In, in, yeah. in all actuality, right, the Xbox One uh, for the first three years was still outselling the 360 from that same standpoint from, from the launch in the first three years. So they were, they, they Xbox one was successful within its own kind of like group within its own under Microsoft, you know, the new hardware was outselling the old hardware at that same amount of time. He didn't necessarily have to do the, we heard you console, you know, and and for him to go in and, you know, get the slimmer one out, get the, the more powerful X out uh, make Microsoft CEOs happy by putting Xbox Live on, on multiple platforms. Like, he's doing everything he set out to do, and he said one of those things was uh, investing in first-party studios and uh, first-party IPs. So I, I have a, 
I'm going to agree. I, I'm going to believe exactly what he said because he did the first two things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and I think another thing is that, <clears throat> you know, and, and this is not to just to just shit on Sony on, on with what I'm going to say, because Microsoft is. Is that a disclaimer? Yeah, it is a disclaimer <laughs> because I'm going to say something and I know I'm going to trigger some Sony fans with it. But the thing I'm just going to say is a lot of people has been. Um, been led to the been led to water and then they come they see that there's not, a, not any water there they have, the playstation has been given a lot of promises for a lot of things and then they say oh we'll just wait later you know or you know their expectations is a little bit too high and then just kind of like e3 or just about, about you know about two years ago that uh, playstation experience things like that they've 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 come gamers have come to to, to expect that when you hear something that's too good to be true nine times out of ten it is and what the Xbox X was was kind of like something that was too good to be true. What the the uh, cloud computing things like that too good to be true. But now we're seeing with the power of the X that hey look, there could there's definitely some bright spots that we can look at and see that you know they really give a damn about gaming. So yeah, let's definitely. Put that, yeah. And on that note, guys, we we definitely went over our time. Um, I, I had a lot of fun talking these topics with you guys. I, I definitely wanted to squeeze that Aaron Greenberg thing in there. I thought that was something important that um, I, I just felt the panel definitely had you know strong opinions about. It, it was a great conversation. But I, I know you know we got gamers in the chat, gamers on the panel, and we definitely want to get the controllers in our hands. So, guys, we're going to go with the outros and the plugs, and I am going to start with the man that beats the storm, Mr. Predator, man. Where where can people find you? Uh, what have you been up to, man? You know the deal. Oh, man, I've been working. That's all I've been doing. I, I barely <laughs> barely played my Xbox this week. I got maybe, I think I played Ori Sunday, uh, the Definitive Edition, finally finished that, and then um, I think I played two rounds of PUBG this entire week. That's it, and then I've been Dude, working. You gotta be fiending, man, because I know you're yeah, doing that. I'm off Monday, so I'll be playing Monday. So, <laughs> um, so um, yeah, so that's it, man. And again, I'll be here next weekend uh, with you guys. Uh, I'm gonna try and get on Crossfire this Friday if I can. Um, and I'm still working with Jay. I haven't had a chance to talk to him, but I'm I'm still planning on doing my podcast on on Sunday mornings before the Mooch and Crap Show. Quick 30, 45 minute podcast. It's gonna be a real quick shotgun. Just me. It's gonna be real raw because I'm an evil person like that. <laughs> um, not for the, not for your kids, not for the weak in the stomach. So um, that's gonna be Sunday mornings. Um, hopefully, I think I want to think I'm gonna start maybe mid September. Uh, if I don't get Jay to get me the graphics I need before then, then I'll just go ahead and go with what I got so well, far and just start it up. When, so. when it comes to Jay, man, this is weird. This is weird to me because I live here. Jay was on vacation in America. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so weird to me, man. I don't know yeah. why. Close-minded, I guess. He's been busy, man, so I get it. He, When I talk to him, he's like, yo, get back with me, man, because I'm, I'm super busy right now. So it's coming. Um, other than that, man, I will be back here with you guys next week, man. Thanks for having me on again. Nice. And, uh, Pred, I don't know. If, you, if you're if you watching the, the show right now, refresh real quick. I did put your Twitter link in with everybody else's in the description below. So, guys... Yo, hit that description. You got to refresh first because I was a little late with doing this. But uh, Predator H2O and Dark Otimus' Twitters, Twitter links are in the description below. So definitely, you know, click that link and follow them. Um, yo, Mega, man. Me mother. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this entire week, you know, from, from tonight going into Friday night, I'm going to practice on not saying Mega Man. All right? I'm going to do that. But... Yo, Mega, why don't you let everybody know where they can get a hold of you, uh, the multiple shows you're on. I hope you have that scroll ready. Man, yeah. you know the deal. Oh, indeed, indeed. Yes, man, you can check me out every Saturday uh, with my with my family at the next podcast. Uh, new and old, of course. Much love to everybody. The Fooskies, Newark, all you guys out there, man. You know what I'm saying? that. But much love to you guys. Uh, also, to... Um, uh, you know, check out the GRG podcast uh, on Friday nights right after Crossfire. Uh, you know, the multiplayer on Thursday nights. That's the wild one. That's, that's where if you just want to hear <laughs> console war, just beef and ignorance, that's Man. the place to be. That's, that's you know what I'm saying? So, oh, you, got you just to... describe ignorant beef? 
<laughs> ignorant beef. Yes, just like just like uh, penis demons. It's the same oh. thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, and uh, also you can check us out on the big on, on the granddaddy of them all. You know what I'm saying? BGST. I have a you know, feeling. I have strong. a feeling. BGST is going to be triple fire this Sunday. Oh man, it's going to be ridiculous, man. We hit record numbers last week. That was ridiculous of how many people checked us out. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for supporting us all, man. And uh, you know, shout out to Intro Media Gaming. And uh, we out. Nice, nice. Hey Don, um, did you first of all did you drop a video today? Second of all, you you know what to do, man. You got to let people know where they can get a hold of you. Yeah, I'm actually dropping video tomorrow. I'm working on a new intro. New intro happens or not, I'm still dropping the video. Um, it is a, sl a take on how the pro needs the X to be successful. Um, so it, it's an interesting take uh, on iterative hardware. So I just want to give my thoughts on that. You can check that out on Happy Little Polygons. Or you can follow me on Twitter, uh, which is the link below. And if you actually look at my Twitter handle, it's almost identical for my gamer tag. Just instead of an underscore, there's a space. And you can follow me on Xbox. Nice, nice. And uh, everybody, thank you again for checking us out live. And for everybody who checks out the show afterwards, your support means everything to us. You guys are the reason why we come together every Saturday and try to give you the best show possible this is your show guys and i want you to know that and always remember that so guys definitely go into the description click on k mega's twitter link and hashtag penis demons for him okay <laughs> y'all are tripping <laughs> yo every time it was don who said that first guy i didn't say that what yo, you talking click, about? click on predators and do hashtag <laughs> baby oil all right <laughs> Guys, we, we had a blast doing this show for you guys. But Hit I know that like people, button, man. Hit that like button, people. Uh, definitely. So, yeah, so. Definitely. Uh, but, uh, yo, we had a blast. But Gamers Got a Game. It is Saturday night. So I'm going to hit you with what I say at the end of every show. 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 We will show. check you out next Saturday on the next podcast. Have a great weekend, everybody. Penis demons. So, k Mega, so when you play that game... <laughs>